Ishtar and Isdabar by Leonidas Lucenci Hamilton Special Introduction From Babylonian and Assyrian Literature, 1901, by Epiphanius Wilson, A.M. The great nation which dwelt in the 7th century before our era on the banks of Tigris and Euphrates flourished in literature as well as in the plastic arts, and had an alphabet of its own. The Assyrians sometimes wrote with a sharp reed, for a pen, upon skins, wooden tablets, or papyrus brought from Egypt. In this case they used cursive letters of a Phoenician character. But when they wished to preserve their written documents, they employed clay tablets, and a stylus whose beveled point made an impression like a narrow elongated wedge, or arrowhead. By a combination of these wedges, letters and words were formed by the skilled and practiced scribe, who would thus rapidly turn off a vast amount of copy. All works of history, poetry, and law were thus written in the cuneiform or old Chaldean characters, and on a substance which could withstand the ravages of time, fire, or water. Hence we have authentic monuments of Assyrian literature in their original form, unglossed, unaltered, and ungarbled, and in this respect Chaldean records are actually superior to those of the Greeks, the Hebrews, or the Romans. The literature of the Chaldeans is very varied in its forms. The hymns to the gods form an important department, and were doubtless employed in public worship. They are by no means lacking in sublimity of expression, and while quite unmetrical they are proportioned and emphasized, like Hebrew poetry, by means of parallelism. In other respects they resemble the productions of Jewish psalmists, and yet they date as far back as the third millennium before Christ. They seem to have been transcribed in the shape in which we at present have them in the reign of Asurbanipal, who was a great patron of letters, and in whose reign libraries were formed in the principal cities. The Assyrian Renaissance of the 17th century BC witnessed great activity among scribes and book collectors, modern scholars are deeply indebted to this golden age of letters in Babylonia for many precious and imperishable monuments. It is, however, only within recent years that these works of horror antiquity have passed from the secluded cell of the specialist and have come within reach of the general reader, or even of the student of literature. For many centuries the cuneiform writing was literally a dead letter to the learned world. The clue to the understanding of this alphabet was originally discovered in 1850 by Colonel Rawlinson, and described by him in a paper read before the Royal Society. Hence the knowledge of Assyrian literature is, so far as Europe is concerned, scarcely more than half a century old. Among the most valuable of historic records to be found among the monuments of any nation are inscriptions, set up on public buildings, in palaces, and in temples. The Greek and Latin inscriptions discovered at various points on the shores of the Mediterranean have been of priceless value in determining certain questions of philology, as well as in throwing new light on the events of history. Many secrets of language have been revealed, many perplexities of history disentangled, by the words engraven on stone or metal, which the scholar discovers amid the dust of ruined temples, or on the sippus of a tomb. The form of one Greek letter, perhaps even its existence, would never have been guessed but for its discovery in an inscription. If inscriptions are of the highest critical importance and historic interest, in languages which are represented by a voluminous and familiar literature, how much more precious must they be when they record what happened in the remotest dawn of history, surviving among the ruins of a vast empire whose people have vanished from the face of the earth. Hence the cuneiform inscriptions are of the utmost interest and value, and present the greatest possible attractions to the curious and intelligent reader. They record the deeds and conquests of mighty kings, the Napoleons and Hannibals of primeval time. They throw a vivid light on the splendid sculptures of Nineveh. They give a new interest to the pictures and carvings that describe the building of cities, the marching to war, the battle, by sea and land. Of great monarchs whose horse and foot were as multitudinous as the locusts that in Eastern literature are compared to them. Lovers of the Bible will find in the Assyrian inscriptions many confirmations of scripture history, as well as many parallels to the account of the primitive world in Genesis. And none can give even a cursory glance at these famous remains without feeling his mental horizon widened. We are carried by this writing on the walls of Assyrian towns far beyond the little world of the recent centuries, we pass, as almost modern, 
the day when Julius Caesar struggled in the surf of Kent against the painted savages of Britain. Nay, the birth of Romulus and Remus is a recent event in comparison with records of incidents in Assyrian national life, which occurred not only before Moses lay cradled on the waters of an Egyptian canal, but before Egypt had a single temple or pyramid, three millenniums before the very dawn of history in the valley of the Nile. But the interest of Assyrian literature is not confined to hymns, or even to inscriptions. A nameless poet has left in the imperishable tablets of a Babylonian library an epic poem of great power and beauty. This is the Epic of Isdabar. At Dursarjina, the city where stood the palace of Assyrian monarchs three thousand years ago, were two gigantic human figures, standing between the winged bulls, carved in high relief, at the entrance of the royal residence. These human figures are exactly alike, and represent the same personage a colossus with swelling thews, and dressed in a robe of dignity. He strangles a lion by pressing it with brawny arm against his side, as if it were no more than a cat. This figure is that of Isdabar, or Jistabar, the great central character of Assyrian poetry and sculpture, the theme of minstrels, the typical hero of his land, the favorite of the gods. What is called the Epic of Isdabar relates the exploits of this hero, who was born the son of a king in Auruk of Chaldea. His father was dethroned by the Elamites, and Isdabar was driven into the wilderness and became a mighty hunter. In the half-peopled earth, so lately created, wild beasts had multiplied and threatened the extermination of mankind. The hunter found himself at war with monsters more formidable than even the lion or the wild bull. There were half-human scorpions, bulls with the head of man, fierce satyrs and winged griffins. Deadly war did Isdabat wage with them, till as his period of exile drew near to a close he said to his mother, I have dreamed a dream. The stars rained from heaven upon me, then a creature, fierce-faced and taloned like a lion, rose up against me, and I smote and slew him. The dream was long in being fulfilled, but at last Isdabar was told of a monstrous jinn, whose name was Hiabani, his head was human but horned, and he had the legs and tail of a bull, yet was he wisest of all upon earth. Enticing him from his cave by sending two fair women to the entrance, Isdabar took him captive and led him to Auruk, where the jinn married one of the women whose charms had allured him, and became henceforth the well-loved servant of Isdabar. Then Isdabar slew the Elamite who had dethroned his father, and put the royal diadem on his own head. And behold the goddess Ishtar, Ashtaroth, cast her eyes upon the hero and wished to be his wife, but he rejected her with scorn, reminding her of the fate of Tammuz, and of Alala the eagle, and of the shepherd to bull and all her husbands. And all dead before their time. Thus, as the wrath of Juno pursued Paris, so the hatred of this slighted goddess attends Isdabar through many adventures. The last plague that torments him is leprosy, of which he is to be cured by Kasasadra, son of Obratantan, last of the ten primeval kings of Chaldea. Kasasadra, while still living, had been transported to paradise, where he yet abides. Here he is found by Isdabar, who listens to his account of the deluge, and learns from him the remedy for his disease. The afflicted hero is destined, after being cured, to pass, without death, into the company of the gods, and there to enjoy immortality. With this promise the work concludes. The great poem of Isdabar has but recently been known to European scholars, having been discovered in 1871 by the eminent Assyriologist, Mr. George Smith. It was probably written about 2000 BC. Though the extant edition, which came from the library of King Asurbanipal in the palace at Dursarjina, must bear the date of 600 BC. The hero is supposed to be a solar personification, and the epic is interesting to modern writers not only on account of its description of the deluge, but also for the pomp and dignity of its style. And for its noble delineation of heroic character. Epiphanius Wilson how do you find this book? Any thoughts about the book or the author? Any suggestion for improvement? Please take a moment to share your thoughts in a comment. If you like it, share it with your friends who might enjoy it as well. Subscribe to keep in touch. Visit completeaudiobooks.com for more quality content. Alcove 1. Tablet I, Column I, Invocation. O oh love, my queen and goddess, 
come to me. My soul shall never cease to worship thee. Come pillow here thy head upon my breast. And whisper in my lyre thy softest, best. And sweetest melodies of bright Sammy, one. Our happy fields two above dear Sabartu. Three. Come nestly closely with those lips of love. And balmy breath, and I with thee shall rove. Through sorry for past ere life on earth was known. And time unconscious sped not, nor had flown. Thou art our all in this impassioned life. How sweetly comes thy presence ending strife. Thou God of peace and heaven's undying joy. Oh, hast thou ever left one pain or cloy. Upon this beauteous world to us so dear. To all mankind thou art their goddess here. To thee we sing, our holiest, fairest God. The one who in that awful chaos trod. And woke the elements by law of love. To teeming worlds in harmony to move. From chaos thou hast led us by thy hand. Five thus spoke to man upon that budding land. The queen of heaven, of the dawn am I. The goddess of all wide immensity. For thee I open wide the golden gate. Of happiness. And for thee love create. To glorify the heavens and fill with joy. The earth, its children with sweet love employ. Thou gavest then the noblest melody. And highest bliss grand nature's harmony. With love the finest particle is rife. And deftly woven in the woof of life. In throbbing dust or clasping grains of sand. In globes of glistening dew that shining stand. On each pure petal, love's own legacies. Of flowering verdure. Earth's sweet panoplies. By love those atoms sip their sweets and pass. To other atoms, join and keep the mass. With mighty forces moving through all space. Tis thus on earth all life has found its place. Through Kazar, six love came formless through the air. In countless forms behold her everywhere. Oh, could we hear those whispering roses sweet. Three beauties bending till their petals meet. And blushing, mingling their sweet fragrance there. In language yet unknown to mortal ear. Their whisperings of love from morn till night. Would teach us tenderly to love the right. O oh love, here stay. Let chaos not return. With hate each atom would its lover spurn. In air above, on land, or in the sea. O oh world, undone and lost that laseth thee. For love we briefly come, and pass away. For other men and maids. Thus bring the day. Of love continuous through this glorious life. Oh, hurl away those weapons fierce of strife. We hear a moment, point of time but live. Too short is life for throbbing hearts to grieve. Thrice holy is that form that love hath kissed. And happy is that man with heart thus blessed. Oh, let not curses fall upon that head. Whom love hath cradled on the welcome bed. Of bliss, the bosom of our fairest God. Or hand of love e'er grasp the venging rod. Oh, come, dear Ziri, seven tune your lyres and lutes. And sing of love with chastest, sweetest notes. Of Akkad's goddess Ishtar, queen of love. And Isdabar, with softest measure move. Great Samus eight son, of him dear Ziri sing. Of him whom goddess Ishtar warmly wooed. Of him whose breast with virtue was imbued. He as a giant towered, lofty grown. As Babel S9 great Pati SI10 was he known. His armed fleet commanded on the seas. And erstwhile travelled on the foreign lees. His mother Elit Gula eleven on the throne. From Erek all Cardunia twelve ruled alone. Column 2. The Fall of Erek. O Moon God, thirteen hear my cry. With thy pure light. O, oh, take my spirit through that awful night. That hovers o'er the long-forgotten years. To sing Acadia's songs and weep her tears. Twas thus I prayed, when lo. My spirit rose. On fleecy clouds, enwrapped in soft repose. 
and I beheld beneath me nations glide. In swift succession by, in all their pride. The earth was filled with cities of mankind. And empires fell beneath a summer wind. The soil and clay walked forth upon the plains. In forms of life, and every atom gains. A place in man or breathes in animals. And flesh and blood and bones become the walls. Of palaces and cities, which soon fall. To unknown dust beneath some ancient wall. All this I saw while guided by the stroke. Of unseen pinions. Then amid the smoke. That rose o'er burning cities. I beheld. White Karsak Kurare's fourteen brow arise that held. The secrets of the gods that felt the proar. Of Kasasadra's ark. I heard the roar. Of battling elements, and saw the waves. That tossed above mankind's commingled graves. The mighty mountain as some sentinel. Stood on the plains alone, and o'er it fell. A halo, bright, divine. Its summit crowned. With sunbeams, shining on the earth around. And o'er the wide expanse of plains. Below. Lay Karsak Klama 15 with light aglow. And nestling far away within my view. Stood Erek, Dnieper, Merid, Eridu. And Babylon, the tower city old. In her own splendor shone like burnished gold. And lo! Grand Erek in her glorious days. Lies at my feet. I see a wondrous maze. Of vistas, groups, and clustering columns round. Within, without the palace. From the ground. Of outer staircases, massive, grand. Stretch to the portals where the pillars stand. A thousand carved columns reaching high. To silver rafters in an azure sky. And palaces and temples round it rise with lofty turrets glowing to the skies, and massive walls far spreading o'er the plains. Here live and move Acadia's courtly trains. And see, the Picudal Ti-16 at the gates, and Masari-17 patrol and guard the streets. And yonder comes a kiss I be, nobleman, with a young prince, and see, a caravan, winds through the gates. With men the streets are filled. And chariots, a people wise and skilled. In things terrestrial, what science, art. Here rain. With laden ships from every mart. The docks are filled, and foreign fabrics bring. From peoples, lands, where many an empire, king. Have lived and passed away, and not have left. In. History or song. Dread time hath cleft. Us far apart. Their kings and kingdoms, priests. And bards are gone, and o'er them sweep the mists. Of darkness backward spreading through all time. Their record swept away in every clime. Those alabaster stairs let us ascend. And through this lofty portal we will wend. See. Richest summer rugs amassed, subdue. The tiled pavement with its varied hue. Upon the turquoise ceiling sprinkled stars. Of gold and silver crescents in bright pairs. And gold-fringed scarlet curtains grace each door. And from the inlaid columns reach the floor. From golden rods extending round the halls. Bright silken hangings drape the sculptured walls. But part those scarlet hangings at the door. Of yon grand chamber. Tread the antique floor. Behold the sovereign on her throne of bronze. While crouching at her feet a lion fawns. The glittering court with gold and gems ablaze. With ancient splendor of the glorious days. Of Akkad sovereignty. Behold the ring. Of dancing beauties circling while they sing. With amorous forms in moving melody. The measure keep to music's harmony. Here. How the music swells from silver lute. And golden stringed lyres and softest flute. And harps and tinkling cymbals, measured drums. While a soft echo from the chamber comes. But see. 
The sovereign lifts her jeweled hand. The music ceases at the queen's command. And lo! Two chiefs in warrior's array. With golden helmets plumed with colors gay. And golden shields, and silver coats of mail. Obeisance make to her with faces pale. Prostrate themselves before their sovereign's throne. In silence brief remain with faces prone. Till Elit Gula 18 speaks, my chiefs, arise. What word have ye for me? What new surprise? Chertau Yu, 19 rising, says, O Dan Nat 20 queen. Thine enemy, Kumbaba 21 with Rimsu 22. With clanging shields, appears upon the hills. And Elam's host the land of Sumer fills. Away, ye chiefs. Sound loud the Napaku. 23. Send to their post each warrior bar are you. 24. The grey embattlements rose in the light. That lingered yet from Samus twenty-five rays, ere night. Her sable folds had spread across the sky. Thus erect stood, where in her infancy. The huts of wandering Akkads had been built. Of soil, and rudely roofed by woolly pelt. Er laid upon the shepherds' worn-out staves. And yonder lay their fathers' unmarked graves. Their chieftains in those early days oft meet. Upon the mountains where they Samus greet. With their rude sacrifice upon a tree. High rays that their sun god may shilling see. Their offering divine. Invoking prey. For aid, protection, blessing through the day. Beneath these walls and palaces abode. The spirit of their country each man trod. As if his soul to Erekas will belonged. And heeded not the enemy which thronged. Before the gates, that now were closed with bars. Of bronze thrice fastened. See the thousand cars. And chariots arrayed across the plains. The marching hosts of Elam's armed trains. The archers, slingers in advance amassed. With black battalions in the center placed. With chariots before them drawn in line. Bedecked with brightest trappings Iridine. While gorgeous plumes of Elam's horses nod. Beneath the awful sign of Elam's god. On either side the mounted spearsmen far. Extend. And all the enginery of war. Are brought around the walls with fiercest shouts. And from behind their shields each archer shoots. Thus Erek is besieged by her dread foes. And she at last must feel Acadia's woes. And feed the vanity of conquerors. Who boast o'er victories in all their wars. Great Sabarda 26 has fallen by Suda 27. And Cassie 28 Goim 29 fell with Lulubiu 30. Thus Karsak Kalama 31 all Eridu 32. Oren with Larsa's allies. Sabartu. With Duran 33 thus was conquered by these sons. Of mighty Shem and strewn was Akkad's bones. Throughout her plains, and mountains, valleys fair. Unburied lay in many a wolf's lair. Oh, where is Akkad's chieftain Isdabar? Her mightiest unrivaled prince of war. The turrets on the battlement walls. Swarm with skilled bowmen, archers from them falls. A cloud of winged missiles on their foes. Who swift reply with shouts and twanging bows. And now amidst the reigning death appears. The scaling ladder, lined with glistening spears. But see. The ponderous catapults now crush. The ladder, spears men, with their mighty rush. Of rocks and beams, nor in their fury slacked. As if a toppling wall came down intact. Upon the maddened mass of men below. But other ladders rise, and up them flow. The tides of armed spearsmen with their shields. From others bowmen shoot, and each man wields. A weapon, never yielding to his foe. For death alone he aims with furious blow. At last upon the wall two soldiers spring. A score of spears their courses backward fling. But others take their place, and man to man. And spear to spear, and sword to sword, till ran. 
the walls with slippery gore. But Ereka's men are brave and hurl them from their walls again. And now the battering rams with swinging power commence their thunders, shaking every tower. And miners work beneath the crumbling walls. Alas! Before her foemen Erek falls. Vain are suspended chains against the blows of dire assaulting engines. Ho! There goes the eastern wall with Ereka's strongest tower. And through the breach her furious foemen pour. A wall of steel withstands the onset fierce. But thronging Elam spears the lines soon pierce. A band of chosen men their fight to die. Before their enemies disdain to fly. The Masari 34 within the breach thus died. And with their dying shout the foe defied. The foes swarm through the breach and o'er the walls. And Erek in extremity loud calls. Upon the gods for aid, but prays for naught. While Elam soldiers, to a frenzy wrought. Pursue and slay. And sack the city old. With fiendish shouts for blood and yellow gold. Each man that falls the foe decapitates. And bears the reeking death to Erek's gates. The gates are hidden neath the pile of heads. That climbs above the walls, and outward spreads. A heap of ghastly plunder bathed in blood. Beside them calm scribes of the victors stood. And careful note the butcher's name, and check. The list, and for each head a price they make. Thus pitiless the sword of Elam gleams. And the best blood of Erek flows in streams. From Erekah's walls some fugitives escape and others in Euphrates wildly leap, and hide beneath its rushes on the bank, and many neath the yellow waters sank. The harper of the queen, an aged man, stands lone upon the bank, while he doth scan the horizon with anxious, careworn face, lest ears profane of Elam's hated race, should hear his strains of mournful melody, now leaning on his harp in memory, Enwrapped, while fitful breezes lift his locks. Of snow, he sadly kneels upon the rocks. And sighing deeply clasps his hands in woe. While the dread past before his mind doth flow. A score and eight of years have slowly passed. Since Rimagu, with Elam's host amassed. Cardunia's ancient capital had stormed. The glorious walls and turrets are transformed. To a vast heap of ruins, weird, forlorn. And Elam's spears gleam through the coming morn. From the sad sight his eyes he turns away. His soul breathes through his harp while he doth play. With bended head his aged hands thus woke. The woes of Erek with a measured stroke. O oh, Erek! Dear Erek, my beautiful home! Acadia's pride, O oh, bright land of the bard! Come back to my vision, dear Erek, oh, come. Fair land of my birth, how thy beauty is marred. The horsemen of Elam, her spearsmen and bows. Thy treasures have ravished, thy towers thrown down. And Akkad is fallen, trod down by her foes. Oh, where are thy temples of ancient renown? Gone are her brave heroes beneath the red tide. Gone are her white vessels that rode o'er the main. No more on the river her pennon shall ride. Gargana is fallen, her people are slain. Wild asses thirty-five shall gallop across thy grand floors. And wild bulls shall paw them and hurl the dust high. Upon the wild cattle that flee through her doors. And doves shall continue her mournful slaves cry. Oh, where are the gods of our Erek so proud? As flies they are swarming away from her halls. The Sidhu 36 of Erek are gone as a cloud. As wild fowl are flying away from her walls. Three years did she suffer, besieged by her foes. Her gates were thrown down and defiled by the feet. Who brought to poor Erek her tears and her woes. In vain to our Ishtar with prayers we entreat. To Ishtar bowed down doth our bell thus reply. Come, Ishtar, my queenly one, Hide all thy tears. Our hero, Taryuman Iizu Sari, 37. 
Innkeeper is fortified with his strong spears. The hope of Cardunia 38 land of my delight. Shall come to thy rescue, upheld by my hands. Deliverer of peoples, whose heart is aright. Protector of temples, shall lead his brave bands. Awake then, brave Akkad, to welcome the day. Behold thy bright banners yet flaming on high. Triumphant are streaming on land and the sea. Arise, then, O Akkad. Behold the Sami. 39. Arranged in their glory the mighty gods come. In purple and gold the grand Tamu forty doth shine. Over Erek, mine Erek, my beautiful home. Above thy dear ashes, behold thy God sign. Column 3. The Rescue of Erek by Isdabar. Hiabani, weary, eyes his native land. And on his harp now lays his trembling hand. The song has ended in a joyous lay. And yet, alas! His hands but sadly play. And used to hope, the strings refuse their aid. To tune in sympathy, and heartless played. Again the minstrel bows his head in woe. And the hot teardrops from his eyelids flow. And chanting now a mournful melody. O'er Eureka's fall, thus sang an elegy. Forty-one inch how long, O Ishtar, will thy face be turned? While Erek desolate doth cry to thee. Thy towers magnificent, O, oh, hast thou spurned. Her blood like water in Ulbar, 42 O, oh, C. The seed of thine own oracle behold. The fire hath ravaged all thy cities grand. And like the showers of heaven them all doth fold. O oh, Ishtar! Broken-hearted do I stand. O, oh, crush our enemies as yonder reed. For hopeless, lifeless, kneels thy bard to thee. And, oh! I would exalt thee in my need. From thy resentment, anger, oh, us free. With eyes bedimmed with tears, he careful scans. The plain, perhaps the dust of caravans. It is. But no. I see long lines of spears. A warrior from the lifting cloud appears and chariots arrayed upon the plain. And is the glorious omen not in vain? What? No. He rubs his eyes in wild surprise. And drinks the vision while he loudly cries. Oh, joy! Our standards flashing from afar. He comes. He comes. Our hero is Dabar. He grasps his harp inspired, again to wake. In song the cry of battle now doth break. Ninarad, 43 servant of our great Nin 44. Shall lead our hosts to victory. God of the chase and war, o'er him, o, shine. Taryumayanai is Zu Sari. 45. Let Elam fall. The cause of Akkad's woes. Revenge of Erek, be the cry. This land our fathers blessed, our king they chose. Taryumayanai is Zu Sari. Our holy fathers sleep upon this plain. We conquer, or we here will die. For victory, then raise the cry, ye men. Taryumayanai is Zu Sari. The minstrel ceases, lifts his hands on high. And still we hear his joyful waning cry. Now echoed by yon hosts along the sky. He comes. Taryumayanai is Zu Sari. Great Akkad's hosts arrayed with spears and shields. Are coming. See them flashing o'er the fields. And he. Bright flashing as the gods attire. Doth lead in burnished gold, our king of fire. His armor shines through yonder wood and fun. That tremble neath the tread of armed men. See. From his jeweled breastplate, helmet. Fly. The rays like Samus from the cloudless sky. How martially he rides his sable steed. That proudly treads and lifts his noble head. While eagerly he gallops down the line. And bears his princely load with port divine. And now, along the plains there sounds afar. The piercing bugle note of Isdabar. For Eureka's walls and turrets are in view. 
and high the standards rise a varied hue. The army halts, the twanging bows are strung, and from their chariots the chieftains sprung. The wheeling lines move at each chief's command, with chariots in front, on either hand. Extend the lines of spears and cavalry. A winged storm cloud waiting for its prey. And see. While Akkad's army ready waits. The enemy are swarming from the gates. The charge from either host, the trumpets sound. And bristling chariots from each army bound. A cloud of arrows flies from Akkad's bows. That hides the sun and falls among their foes. Now roars the thunder of great Akkad's cars. Their brazen chariots as blazing stars. Through Nukku's forty-six depths with streams of blazing fire. Thus fall upon the foe with vengeful ire. The smoking earth shakes underneath their wheels. And from each cloud their thunder loudly peals. Thus Akkad on their foes have fiercely hurled. Their solid ranks with Ninrad's flag unfurled. The charging lines meet with a fearful sound. As tempests waves from rocks in rage rebound. The foe thus meet the men of Isdabar. While o'er the field fly the fierce gods of war. Dark Nina Zu 47 her torch holds in her hand. With her fierce screams directs the gory brand. And Mam Mit 48 urges her with furious hand. And coiling dragons 49 poison all the land. With their black folds and pestilential breath. In fierce delight thus ride the gods of death. The shouts of Akkad mingle with the cries. Of wounded men and fiery steeds, which rise. From all the fields with shrieks of carnage, war. Till victory crowns the host of Isdabar. The chariots are covered with the slain. And crushed beneath lie dead and dying men. And horses in their harness wounded fall with dreadful screams, and wildly view the wall, of dying warriors piling o'er their heads, and wonder why each man some fury leads, and others break across the gory plain, in mad career till they the mountain gain, and snorting on the hills in wild dismay, one moment glance below, then fly away, away from sounds that prove their masters, fiends. Away to freedom snuffing purer winds. Within some cool retreat by mountain streams. Where peacefully for them, the sunlight gleams. At last the foe is scattered o'er the plain. And Akkad fiercely slays the flying men. When Isdabar beholds the victory won. By Akkad's grand battalions of the sun. His bugle called the awful carnage stays. Then loud the cry of victory they raise. Column 4. Coronation of Isdabar. A crowd of maidens led a glorious van. With roses laden the fair heralds ran. With silver-throated music chant the throng. And sweetly sang the coronation song. And now we see the gorgeous cavalcade. Within the walls in Akkad's grand parade. They pass. Led by the maidens crowned with flowers. Who strew the path with fragrance. To the towers. And walls and pillars of each door bright cling. The garlands. Hear the maidens joyful sing. Oh, shout the cry. Acadians, joyful sing. For our deliverer. Oh, crown him king. Then strew his path with garlands, tulips, rose. And wave his banners as he onward goes. Our mighty Ninrad comes, oh, raise the cry. We crown Taryumanai Izu Sari. Away to Samus Temple Grand, away. For Akkad crowns him, crowns him there. He is our chosen Sar 50 this glorious day. Oh, send the Conga 51 through the air. Then chant the chorus, all ye hosts above. Oh daughters, mothers, sing for him we love. His glory who can sing, who brings us joy. For hope and gladness all our hearts employ. He comes, our hope and strength in every war. We crown him as our king, our Isdabar. Away to Samus Temple Grand, away. For Akkad crowns him, 
crowns him there. He is our chosen Tsar this glorious day. Oh, send the Kanga through the air. Toward the temple filed the long parade. The nobles led while Akkad's music played. The harps and timbrels, barsoms, drums and flutes. Unite with trumpets and the silver lutes. Surrounded by his chieftains rides the Tsar. In purple robes upon his brazen car. Bedecked with garlands, steeds of whitest snow. The chariot draw in state with movement slow. Each steed led by a Kaisib, nobleman. A score of beauteous horses linked in span. The army follows with their nodding plumes. And burnished armor, trumpets, rolling drums. And glistening spears enwreathed with fragrant flowers. While scarfs are waving from the crowded towers. And shouts of joy their welcome loud proclaim. And from each lip resounds their monarch's name. And now before the holy temple stands. The chariot, in silence cease the bands. Around an altar stand the waiting priests. And held by them, the sacrificial beasts. The hero from his chair descends. And bowing to the priests, he lowly bends. Before the sacred altar of the sun. And prays to Samus, Akkad's holy one. Fifty-two inch O Samus, I invoke thee, throned on high. Within the cedar's shadow bright thou art. Thy footing rests upon immensity. All nations eagerly would seek thy heart. Their eyes have turned toward thee, O our friend. Whose brilliant light illuminates all lands. Before thy coming all the nations bend. O, oh, gather every people with thy hands. For thou, O Samus, knowest boundaries. Of every kingdom, falsehood dost destroy. And every evil thought from sorceries. Of wonders omens, dreams that do annoy. And evil apparitions, thou dost turn. To happy issue, malice, dark designs. And men and countries in thy might o'erturn. And sorcery that every soul maligns. Oh, in thy presence refuge let me find. From those whose spells invoke against thy king. Protect one. And my heart within thine, O, oh, bind. Fifty-three thy breath within mine inmost soul, O, oh, bring. That I with thee, O oh Samus, may rejoice. And may the gods who me created, take. Thy hands and lead me, make thy will my choice. Fifty-four direct my breath, my hands, and of me make. They servant, Lord of light of legions vast. O judge, thy glory hath all things surpassed. The king then rises, takes the sacred glass, fifty-five. And holds it in the sun before the mass. Of waiting fuel on the altar piled. The centering rays the fuel glowing gild. With a round spot of fire and quickly. Spring. Above the altar curling, while they sing. Fifty-six, O, oh, to the desert places may it fly. This incantation holy. O oh, Spirit of the heavens, us this day. Remember, O, oh, remember. O oh, Spirit of the earth, to thee we pray. Remember. Us remember. O oh, God of fire. A lofty prince doth stand. A warrior, and son of the blue sea. Before the God of fire in thine own land. Before thy holy fires that from us free. Dread darkness, where dark Nukku reigns. Our prince, as monarch we proclaim. His destiny thy power maintains. O, oh, crown his glory with wide fame. With bronze and metal thou dost bless. All men, and givest silver, gold. The goddess with the horned face. Did bless us with thee from of old. From dross thy fires change gold to purity. O, oh, bless our fire king, round him shine. With heaven's vast sublimity. And like the earth with rays divine. As the bright walls of heaven's shrine. Column V Ishtar and her maids in the favorite haunt of Isdabar. The king while hunting where a forest grows. Around sweet hyacinths and budding rose. Where a soft zephyr o'er them gently flows. From the dark Sikkati 57 where Karsak 58 glows. 
and Sidil 59 softly dances on the leaves. And a rich odorous breath from them receives. Where tulips peep with heliotrope and pink. With violets upon a gleaming brink. Of silver gliding o'er a waterfall. That sings its pearling treasures o'er a wall. Of rugged onyx sparkling to the sea. A spot where Zuri sixty sport oft merrily. Where he's sixty one arm outstretched doth form a bay. Wild, sheltered, where his sea daughters play. A jasper rock here peeps above the waves. Of emerald hue, with them its summit laves. Around, above, this cool enchanting cove. Bend amorous, spicy branches. Hear the dove. Oft coos its sweetest notes to its own mate. And fragrance pure, divine, the air doth freight. To sport with gods no lovelier place is found. With love alone the mystic woods resound. Here witching Zenaki sixty-two oft drag within. The waves unwilling Zsi, sixty-three hear the din. Of roars of sullen storms is never known. When tempests make the mighty waters groan. Nor sound of strife is heard, but rippling rills. Or softest note of love, the breezes fills. And here the king in blissful dreams oft lies. Mid pure ambrosial odors, and light flies. The tune in bliss. Away from kingly care. And hollow splendor of the courtly glare. Away from triumphs, battlefields afar. The favorite haunt of huntsman Isdabar. The queen of love the glowing spot surveys. And sees the monarch where he blissful lays. And watching till he takes his bow and spear. To chase the wild gazelles now browsing near. She, ere the king returns, nearby arrives. With her two maids. With them for love connives. Joy and seduction thus voluptuous fly. Her Semkatu, 64 Karimtu 65 from the sky. As gently, lightly as a spirit's wing. Oft carries gods to earth while Sidhu sing. Thus, they, with lightest step, expectant stood. Within this lovely spot beneath the wood. Their snowy limbs they bear, undraped now stand. Upon the rock at Ishtar's soft command. Like marble forms endued with life they move. And thrill the air with welcome notes of love. The Itsturi same Muttabri 66 sang. Their sweetest notes, and the Karsanyu 67 rang. With songs of thrushes, turtle doves and jays. And linnets, with the nightingale's sweet lays. Goldfinches, magpies and the wild hoopoo. With cries of green-plumed parrots and cuckoos. Peewits and sparrows join the piercing cries. Of gorgeous herons, while now upward flies. The eagle screaming, joyful spreads his wings. Above the forest. And the woodchuck rings. A wild tattoo upon the trees around. And hummingbirds were o'er the flowering ground. In flocks, and beat the luscious laden air. With emerald and gold, and scarlet, where. These perfect forms with godly grace divine. In loveliness upon the rock recline. Sweet joy is slender formed, with bright black eyes. That sparkle oft and dance with joy's surprise. Seduction, with her rare voluptuous form. Enchanteth all till wildest passions warm. The blood and fire the eye beneath her charm. All hearts in heaven and earth she doth disarm. The queen with every perfect charm displayed. Delights the eye, and fills the heart, dismayed. With fear, lest the bright phantom may dissolve. To airy nothingness, till fierce resolve. Fills each who her beholds. While love doth dart. From liquid eyes and captivates the heart. She is the queen who fills the earth with love. And reigns unrivaled in her realms above. Beware, ye hearts. Beware. Who feel the snare. Of Ishtar, lest ye tread upon the air. When ye her rosy chain of fragrance wear. When blindness strikes the eye, and deaf the ear. Becomes, and heartstrings only lead you then. Till ye return to common sense again. 
enthralled mayhap and captive led in chains. Ye then will leisure have to bear your pains. Or if perchance a joy hath come to thee. Through all thy joyous life, then happy be. Column 6. Isdabar falls in love with Ishtar, the queen of love. The hour has come when Isdabar will seek. The cool enchantment of the cove, and slake. His thirst with its sweet waters bubbling pure. Where love has spread for him her sweetest lure. The maid's expectant listening, watch and wait. His coming. Oft in ecstasies they prate. O'er his surprise, and softly sport and splash. The limpid waves around, that glowing flash. Like heaps of snowy pearls flung to the light. By he sixty-eight hands, his ziri sixty-nine to delight. And now upon the rock each maid reclines. While Ishtar's form beneath them brightly shines. Beside the fountain stands the lovely god. The graceful sovereign of love's sweet abode. He comes. The shrubs of yonder jasmine near. Are rustling, oh, he comes. My Isdabar. And thus her love she greets, why art thou here? Thou lovely mortal. King art thou, or seer. We reck not which, and welcome give to thee. Wouldst thou here sport with us within the sea? And then, as if her loveliness forgot. She quickly grasped her golden locks and wrought. Them round her form of symmetry with grace. That well became a god, while o'er her face. Of sweetest beauty blushes were o'erspread. Thou seest only nature's robe, she said. Tis all I wish while sporting with my maids. And all alone no care have we for jades. And if with thee we can in truth confide. We here from all the world may cozy hide. She hurls a glance toward him, smiling naive. Then bounding from the rock, peeps from a wave. The waters fondling her surround, embrace. Her charms, and now emerging with rare grace. She turning says. Make haste, my hearts. Come forth. Attend your queen, and then she parts. The azure waves, to where, in dumb surprise. The king enchanted stands, and fondly eyes. The queen divine, while fascinating thrills. Sweep wildly through his breast. As fragrance fills. The rose tree groves, or gardens of the gods. Or breezes odorous from the blessed abodes. A longing, rising, fills his inmost soul. For this sweet queen who offers him a goal. His stormy life has never known, since he. His loved one lost beneath the raging sea. And all his calm resolves to seek no more. A joy which passed and left his heart forlore. Are breaking, vanishing beneath her charms. Dissolving as the mists, when sunlight warms. The earth, then scorching drinks the rising dews. Till he at last no longer can refuse. And love directs while he the goddess greets. Such wondrous beauty here no mortal meets. But come, thou zero are you, seventy with me sweetly rest. Primroses, gentians, with their charms invest. My mossy couch, with odorous citron trees. And feathery palms above, and I will please. Thee with a mortal's love thou hast not known. In pure love mingling let our spirits run. For earthly joys are sweeter than above. That rarest gift, the honeyed kiss of love. On earth, is sweeter bliss than gods enjoy. Their shadowy forms with love cannot employ. Such pleasure as a mortal's sweet caress. Come, Zru, and thy spirit I will bless. The mandrake seventy-one ripe and golden, glows around. The fruit of love is fragrant on the ground. Amid the dudime seventy-two plants he now reclines. And to his welcome fate himself resigns. The lovely queen beside him now doth lay. And leads his soul along the blissful way. That comes to every heart that longs for love. When purest joy doth bless us from above. From her soft liquid eyes the love light speaks. And her warm hands she lays in his, and wakes. 
beneath her touch a thrill of wild desire. Until his blood now seems like molten fire. Her eyes half closed begot a passion wild. With her warm breast, her loves hath beguiled. She nearer creeps with hot and balmy breath. And trembling form aglow, and to him saith. My lips are burning for a kiss, my love. A prize like this, a heart of stone would move. And he his arms around her fondly placed. Till she reclined upon his breast, embraced. Their lips in one long thrilling rapture meet. But hark! What are these strains above so sweet? That float around, above, their love surround. A new Nasi I-73 from forests, mounts around. And from the streams and lakes, and ocean, trees. And all that haunt the godly place, to please. The lovers, softly chant and dance around. To cymbals, lyres until the rocks resound. Of goddess Ishtar chant. And Isdabar. The queen of love wed to the king of war. And he alarmed starts up and springs away. And furious cries, to Ishtar's wild dismay. What meanest thou, thou wanton brazen thing? Wouldst thou on me the direst curses bring? And lo! The goddess is transformed. The crown of her own silver skies shines like the sun. And o'er her dazzling robes a halo falls. Her stately form with glory him appalls. For heaven's dazzling splendor o'er her flows. With rays celestial, o'er her brow there glows. A single star. Have I embraced a god? He horrified now cries, and she doth nod. Ascent. But, oh I wilt thou thy queen forgive. I love thee. Stay. Oh, stay. My heart you grieve. He springs beyond the mystic circling ring. And from their sight thus glides the angry king. Beneath the wood himself he doth disguise. In tattered garments, on his steed he flies. And when he comes in sight of Eureka's gate. His beggar's mantle throws aside, in state. Again enrobed, composed his anxious face. Through Eureka's gates he rides with kingly grace. O'er his adventure thus the king reflects. Alas my folly leads, my life directs. Tis true, the goddess hath seductive charms. E'en yet I feel her warm embracing arms. Enough. Her love from me I'll drive away. Alas! For me, is this unfruitful day. Tablet 2 Column I Ishtar's Midnight Courtship in the Palace of Isdabar As Samus Kar sank in the glowing west And Sin the moon god forth had come full drayest For starry dance across the glistening skies The sound of work for man on earth now dies And all betake themselves to sweet repose the silver light of sin above bright flows. And floods the figures on the painted walls. O'er sculptured lions, softly, lightly falls. Like grim and silent watchdogs at the door. They stand, in marble check their leaping roar. The king within his chamber went his way. Upon his golden jeweled couch he lay. The silken scarlet canopy was hung. In graceful drapery and loosely clung around his couch, and purple damask cloths, embroidered with rare skill, preserved from moths, by rich perfumes, to the carved lintel clung, in graceful folds, thus o'er the entrance hung, Queen Ishtar softly comes, and o'er his dreams, a mystic spell she draws, until it seems, while half awake he lies, that she is yet, close nestling in his arms, as he had met, her in the wood, and with her there reclined, while her soft arms around him were entwined. Thus while he sleeps she hovers o'er his bed, with throbbing heart, and close inclines her head, until her lips near touch the sleeping king's, but daring not to kiss. She love thus brings, all through his dreams, until one misty night, while be yet restless tossed, the lovely sprite, 
sunk him to deeper sleep with her soft lyre. While hanging o'er his couch consumed with fire. That nestling around her heartstrings fiercely burned. Until at last lulled by the strain he turned. Upon his couch at rest. And she now lay. Beside him closely, when she heard him say. My love thou art, but canst not be. No more. He murmurs, then in flame she sought the door. Perchance the Sukuli seventy-four sleep not, she said. And satisfied, turned where her lover laid. And to his royal couch she crept again. Her bliss will have despite of gods and men. Her hot and burning lips cannot resist. The tempting treasure lying there, nor missed. Shall be the dearest joys of love from her. Who rules all hearts in heaven, earth, and air. Her right divine that blessing sweet to take. She will assert, her burning thirst to slake. His couch the heavenly queen of love now graces. And on his breast her glorious head she places. Embracing him, she softly through her lips. And his, the sweetest earthly nectar sips. While he in sleep lies murmuring of love. And she in blissful ecstasy doth move. Her lips to his, she wildly places there. Until to him it seems a fond nightmare. And thus, against his will, she fondly takes. What he her shall deny when he awakes. The stolen kisses both the lovers thrill. Unquenched her warm desire would kiss him still. But his hot blood now warms him in his dream. Which is much more to him than it doth seem. And clasping her within convulsing arms. Receives a thrill that all his nerves alarms. And wakes him from the dreams she had instilled. What means this fantasy that hath me filled? And spirit form that o'er my pillow leans. I wonder what this fragrant incense means. Oh, tush, tis but an idle, wildering dream. But how delightful, joyous it did seem. Her beauteous form it had, its breath perfume. Do spirit form such loveliness assume? The goddess yet dares not her form reveal. And quickly she herself doth now conceal. Behind the damask curtains at the door. When he awoke, sprang to the chamber floor. As his own made the queen herself transforms. Says entering in haste. What wild alarms! Thee, Tsar, and then Demura waits reply. In doubt to hear or to his bosom fly. My maid art thou. Tis well, for I have dreamed. Of spirits, as a ZRU fair it seemed. Column 2. The king's second dream an early ride upon Summer's plain, and hand to hand conflict on the banks of the Euphrates. The night is fleeing from the light of dawn. Which dimly falls upon the palace lawn. The king upon his royal Dumkai seventy five sleeps. And to his couch again Queen Ishtar creeps. In spite his dream to dismal thoughts she turns. Her victim tosses, now with fever burns. He wildly starts, and from his dumb kai springs. While loud his voice throughout the palace rings. Ho! Vassals! Haste to me! Your king! He cries. And stamping fiercely while, his passions rise. The Sukli 76 and Masari 77 rush in. What trouble, Tsar? Have foes here come within? Then searching around they in his chamber rush. And eagerly aside the curtains push. The king yet paces on the floor with strides. That show the trouble of his mind, and chides. Them all as laggards, soon the sun will rise. My steed prepared bring hence, he turning cries. He mounts and gallops through the swinging gates. Nor for attendance of his vassals waits. Nor turns his face toward the Namziekai, 78. Who quickly opened for the king to fly. Without the gates. Across the plains he rides. Away unmindful where his steed he guides. The horse's hoofs resound upon the plain. As the lone horseman with bewildered brain. To leave behind the phantoms of the night. Rides fiercely through the early morning light. 
Beyond the orange orchards, citron groves. Mid feathery date palms he reckless roves. The fields of yellow grain mid fig trees flash. Unseen, and prickly pears, pomegranates, dash. In quick succession by, till the white foam. From his steed's mouth and quivering flanks doth come. Nor heeds the whitened flowing mane, but flies. While clouds of dust him follow, and arise. Behind him o'er the road like black storm clouds. While Zoo 79 the storm bird onward fiercely goads. The 780 raven spirits of the air. And News Coup 81 opens wide the fiery glare. Of pent up lightnings for fierce Jibble's 82 hand. Who hurls them forth at Nurgle's 83 stern command. And Rimmon 84 rides triumphant on the air. And Minazu 85 for victims doth prepare. The king rides from the road into the wild. Nor thought of danger, his stern features smiled. As the worn steed from a huge lion shied. Which turning glanced at them and sprang aside. Now Zpiso and I 86 fly before the king. And yellow leopards through the rushes spring. Upon Euphrates banks his steed he reigns. And views the rosy wilds of summer's plains. He looked toward the east across the plain. That stretched afar o'er brake and marshy fun. And clustering trees that marked the tigress course. And now beyond the plain o'er fields and moors. The mountain range of Zoo 87 o'er Seuss's land. Is glowing neath the touch of Samus' hand. For his bright face is rising in the east. And shifting clouds from sea and rising mist. The robes of purple, violet and gold. With rosy tints the form of Samus fold. The tamarisk and scarlet mistletoe. With green acacia's golden summits glow. And citron, olives, myrtle, climbing vine. Arbutus, cypress, plane tree rise divine. The emerald verdure, clad with brilliant lines. With rose tree forests quaffs the morning dews. The king delighted bears his troubled brow. In Samus golden rays doth holy bow. But see! A shadow steals along the ground. And trampling footsteps through the copses sound. And Isdabar, his hand placed on his sword. Loud cries. Who cometh o'er mine Ereka's sword? An armed warrior before him springs. The king, dismounted, his bright weapon swings. Tis I, Prince Dibbara, 88 Lord Isdabar. And now at last alone we meet in war. My soldiers you o'erthrow upon the field. But here to Nukku's 89 son thine arm shall yield. The monarch eyes the warrior evil born. And thus replies to him with bitter scorn. And dost thou think that Samus' son shall die? By a vile foe who from my host did fly? Or canst thou hope that sons of darkness may? The heaven born of light and glory slay? As well mayst hope to quench the god of fire. But thou shalt die if death from me desire. The giant forms a moment fiercely glared. And carefully advanced with weapons bared. Which flash in the bright rays like blades of fire. And now in parry meet with blazing ire. Each firmly stood and rained their ringing blows. And caught each stroke upon their blades, till glows. The forest round with sparks of fire that flew. Like blazing meteors from their weapons true. And towering in their rage they cautious sprung. Upon each, foiled, while the deep Sukha ninety rung. At last the monarch struck a mighty blow. His foeman's shield of gold, his blade cleft through. And as the lightning swung again his sword. And struck the chieftain's blade upon the sword. A sedu springs from out the tangled copse. And at his feet the sword still ringing drops. The king his sword placed at his foeman's throat. And shouted. How see a ninety-one to yon waiting boat? Or I will send thy body down this stream. C.A. is cabiu. V.A. K.L.B.U. 92 whence you came. The chief disarmed now slunk away surprised. And o'er the strength of Sardan new 93 surmised. 
the king returns, and rides within the gate. Of Erech, and the council entered late. Column 3. Isdabar relates his second dream to his seers, who cannot interpret it. The councillors assembled round the throne. Within the council halls of Zam at ninety-four stone. Now greet their monarch, and behold his face. With trouble written on his brow. And trace. Uneasiness within that eagle eye. While be with stately tread, yet wearily. Ill's throne approached. He turned to the moody, ninety-five. And swept a glance upon his cause's eye, ninety-six. Uneasy they all eyed his troubled face. For he had ridden at a furious pace. The Abuli ninety-seven had told them on that morn. How he across the plains had wildly torn. To drive away some vision of the night. One asked, Hath our sardin news dreams been light? Or hath dread phantoms o'er thy pillow hung? For trouble on thy countenance hath clung. The monarch startled at the question eyes. The counsellor, and to him thus replies. Tis true, my counsellors and wisest men. I dreamed a fearful dream sat Muesai. 98 When. I have disclosed it, if one clear reveals. Its meaning all and not from me conceals. On him will I the greatest wealth bestow. I will ennoble him, and the Sibzu 99. A Kubarare 100 for him shall rich prepare. As my Turtan at 101 he shall be, and seer. Decked with a golden chain shall next preside. At every feast, and break his bread beside. The king, and highest rank he shall attain. Mong counsellors, and mine own favour gain. And seven wives to him I will allow. And a grand palace. This as king I vow. The scribe it shall enroll above my seal. As Ereka's sars decree beyond repeal. I dreamed upon my dumb kai one hundred and two fast asleep. The stars from heaven fell from yonder deep. To earth, and one, with fierceful heat my back. Did pierce as molten fire, and left its track. Of flames like some huge ball along my spine. And then transformed, it turned its face to mine. As some fierce god it glowed before my sight. Till agony was lost in dread affright. I rooted stood, in terror, for its face. Was horrible, I saw in its feet's place. A lion's claws. It sprang, my strength it broke. And slew me, gloating over me. Awoke. I sprang, methought I was a corpse car A 103. V A tatka mat sar, talk a bit la sha. Arepati I sat ti, aridida. Car A. V A haoli ka. Likar u b u ki mi ta. The seers in silence stand, perplexed and think. But from the task at once the wisest shrink. The king each face soon read. Ye tell me no. And nodding all, concealed from him their woe. For they beheld within the dream some fate. Impending o'er him born of godly hate. And durst not to their monarch prate their fears. For flatterers of kings are all his seers. The king impatient eyed them all with scorn. And hid his thoughts by wildest passions born. And then at last contemptuous to them said. So all my seers of trouble are afraid. Or else in ignorance you turn away. Tis well. I sorely need a seer this day. And they now prostrate fall before his throne. Forgive thy seers, one cries, O mighty one. For we this dreadful dream do fear portends. Thy harm. A god some message to thee sends. We know not what, but fear for thee, our sar. And none but one can augur it, afar. He lives, he abani should before the king. Be brought from Zajibri 10 for the Nabi U 105 bring. Tis well. Prince Zaidu for the hermit send. And soon this mystery your sar will end. The king distressed now to the temple goes. To lay before the mighty gods his woes. This prayer recites to drive away bad dreams. While Samus' holy altar brightly gleams. 
106 inch O Samus. May my prayer bring me sweet rest. And may my Lord his favor grant to me. Annihilate the things that me invest. This day, O God. Distressed, I cry to thee. O Goddess. Be thou gracious unto me. Receive my prayer, my sins forgive I pray. My wickedness and will arrayed against thee. O, oh, pardon me. O God, be kind this day. My groaning may the seven winds destroy. Clothe me with deep humility. Receive. My prayers, as winged birds, O, oh, may they fly. And fishes carry them, and rivers weave. Them in the waters on to thee, O God. As creeping things of the vast desert, cry. I unto thee outstretched on Erekah's sod. And from the river's lowest depths I pray. My heart cause thou to shine like polished gold. Though food and drink of Nina Zu 107 this day. Be mine, while worms and death thy servant fold. O, oh, from thine altar me support, protect. In low humility I pray, forgive. Feed me with joy, my dreams with grace direct. The dream I dreamed, O oh favorable give. To me its omen filled with happiness. May Machir 108, God of dreams, my couch invest. With visions of Bitsag Gal my heart bless. The temple of the gods, of Neen, with rest. Unbroken, and to Meridak I pray. The favoring one, to prosper me in mine. 1090, may thy entering exalted be. And thy divinity with glory shine. And may our city shine with glowing meads. And all my people praise thy glorious deeds. Now to Euphrates banks the Sar and seers. Their footsteps turn to pray into the ears. Of he, 110 where, in white, a hand of priests. Drawn in a crescent, Isdabar invests. Now at the water's edge he leans, his hands. Dips in the waves, and pours upon the sands. The sparkling drops, while all of him descant. To he, thus the incantation chant. O oh, chant our incantation to the waters pure. Euphrates waters flowing to the sea. Where his holy face shines bright on every shore. O oh, Sabbath. 111 of Timothy 112 to ye. We pray. May your bright waters glowing shine. As his face, and heaving breast divine. O Sabbath, to your Father he take our prayer. And may Dao Kina, 113 your bright mother, hear. With joy, O shine, as peaceful as the sleeping light. O ever may your throbbing waves be bright. O Spirit of the heaven, hear. Remember us, remember. O Spirit of the earth, come near. Remember us, remember. O hear us, he. Hear us, Dear Dao Kinao. Caca Ma U Caca Ma U Caca Ma. 114. Column 4. Hiabani, the hermit seer. Before a cave within the Gabri 115 wild. A seer is resting on a rock, exiled. By his own will from all the haunts of men. Beside a pool, within a rocky glen. He sits. A turban rests upon his brow. And meets the lengthened beard of whitest snow. This morn an omen comes before his eyes. And him disturbs with a wild eagle's cries. That fierce attacks a fox before his cave. For he of beasts is the most cunning knave. In wait upon the ground the fox hath lain. To lure the bird, which flying deems him slain. He fiercely seizes it, as swooping down. The bird with its sly quarry would have flown. But the ASI 116 quick seized it by the throat. While the wide wings with frantic fury smote. The beast, and the sharp talons deeply tore. Its foe both greedy for the other's gore. And lo! A voice from yonder sky resounds. Hiabani to his feet now quickly bounds. And bowing, listens to the voice that comes. In gentleness, upon the winds it roams. From yon blue heights like sighing of the trees. 
the seer in reverence upon his knees. Now holy bears his head in Samus rays. While the soft voice to him thus gently says. A messenger, Hiabani, soon shall come. With offers rich, to leave thy lonely home. This eagle sought its food and found a snare. The messenger will come from Isdabar. To learn from thee the meaning of his dream. Which goddess Ishtar sent, a snare for him. Then to the messenger prove not a snare. As yonder ASI doth the eagle tear. The seer in fury tore his beard of snow. And cried. Alas! My days shall end in woe. Within these wilds my happiness is mine. No other joys I seek, my God divine. I would upon these rocks lie down to die. Upon my back here sleep eternally. And Samus urging, to him thus replied. Hiabani, hast thou not some manly pride? And thinkest thou no joy thou here wilt lose? The lovely Sam Katu 117 the seer may choose. Arrayed in trappings of divinity. And the insignia of royalty. Hiabani then in erect shall be great. And live in happiness and royal state. And Isdabar shall hearken, and incline. His heart in warmest friendship, and recline. With thee upon a couch of luxury. And seat thee on a throne of royalty. On his left hand, a crown shall grace thy brow. Kings of the earth shall to thee subject bow. And kiss thy feet, and Isdabar shall give. Thee wealth, and thou in luxury shalt live. In silence Ereka's men shall bow to thee. In royal raiment thou shalt happy be. Hiabani listened to the words that came. From Samus, and his brow was lit with shame. To hear the god of war urge him to go. To earthly happiness mayhap to woe. But he within his cave now listless turns. When Samus ceased. Then to his rock returns. And seats himself with calmness on his brow. His thoughts in happy memories now flow. And he recalls the blissful days of yore. When he as seer lived on Euphrates' shore. As the queen's bard oft tuned a festive lay. While soft-eyed maidens dance and cymbals play. Column V Expedition of Zaidu in Search of the Seer Prince Zaidu on his steed now hastes away. Upon the plains he travelled all that day. Next morn the Zagabri he slow ascends. Along the mountain sides the horseman wends. Beneath the Aryan eye, 118 in cliffs, and seas. The plains and mountains o'er the misty trees. From the wild summit. An old Karsak glow. Above them all with its twin crests of snow. He plunges in the wild to seek the cave. Three days unceasing sought young Zaida brave. And now at last within the glen he rode. And near approached Hiabani's wild abode. At last he sees the seer before his home. And with his monster 119 now toward him come. That walked subdued beside the hermit seer. Thus they upon the rocks above appear. Why art thou here in warrior's array? The hermit cries. I know thee not. Away. O holy seer. Tis Zaidu, from Arsar. The king of Erek, chieftain Isdabar. What seekest thou within my mountain lair? Hiabani angry cried. What brings thee here? For thee. If true Hiabani is thy name. I seek the hermit seer of wondrous fame. My king doth offer thee rich gifts of state. And sent me to thee here to make thee great. No empty honors do I seek, which void. Of all true happiness, all men have cloyed. Return then to thy haunts of pleasure, pain. For thy king's embassy is all in vain. The seer returns within his lonely cave. And leaves the prince alone the beast to brave. At last it slinks away within the gloom. No more from their wild home doth either come. Three days Prince Zaidu watches the dark lair. But now his courage turns to blank despair. The seer hath changed his mind since Samus sought. To urge him forth to leave his lonely lot. The prince the mountain precipice now climbs. 
and peers within while clinging to the limbs of stunted oaks, and views the mountain lair. But all in vain his calls ring on the air. Then mounting wearily his steed he turns away, and unsuccessful thus returns. Column 6. He a body resolves to return to Erech. As Zaidu sadly turns and rides away, the hermit from his cave comes forth to pray. Alas! Hath all these wilds their charms here lost? And is my breast with wild ambition tossed? My lonely cot I look upon with shame. Again I long to seek the fields of fame. Where luxury my remaining years may crown, and happiness may find or tears. Tis true. I should have welcomed the Barayu, 120. But he hath since returned to Sabartu. 121. His harp he took from its dust covered case. And kissed its carved and well remembered face. And tuning it, he glanced toward the wood. And sang his farewell ode to solitude. Farewell, ye mountains, woods and trees. My heart doth long again for joy. I love your wilds and mossy leas. But oh, your solitude doth cloy. I love to see the Burkai is 122. Sweep stately o'er the mossy rocks. And Sabi 123 in a wild like this. Hear the tattoo of red woodchucks. I love the cries of Ligbari 124. The Nessai 125 calling for their prey. And leaping of the Na'ali, 126. That fly in wildest fear away. I love the Biuhirtseirai 127 all. Karaseanu Shuu 2, 128. Here see you at TSI 129 with thunder roll. Across the skies within my view. I love to see the CACA by 130. Peep through the pine trees o'er my home. And watch the wild 2 Araikai 131. And arm 132 welcome, to me come. Farewell. Ye solitudes, farewell. I will not moulder rotting lie. With no one's lips to wish me well. Oh give me immortality. But what is fame? A bubble blown. Upon the breeze, that bursts its shell. And all our brightest hopes are flown. And leaves our solitude a hell. The holy minstrel bows his head in woe. And sweeps the harp strings with a movement slow. Then lifts his eyes toward the setting sun. His evening invocation thus begun. 133 O Samus. To the lifting of my hands. Show favor. Unto me thy servant turn. What man before thy blessed light withstands? O thou. What mortal thine own words can learn? And who can rival them in violet? 134 Among the gods no equal thou hast found. In heaven who of all the gods is great? O thou alone. Art great through heaven's bound. On earth what man is great? Alas! No one. For thou alone art great. Through earth's vast bounds. When wide thy awful voice in heaven resounds. The gods fall prostrate to our Holy One. When on the earth thy voice afar resounds. The genii 135 bow to thee and kiss the dust. In thee, O Samus. Do I put my trust. For thy great love and mercy wide abounds. O my Creator, God, thy watchfulness. O'er me, O may it never cease. Keep thou the opening of my lips. The fleece. Of purest snow be my soul's daily dress. Guard thou my hands. O Samus, Lord of Light. And ever keep my life and heart aright. Tablet 3 Column I, Hiabani's Wisdom Song of the Kawakai. The dark-eyed maids are dancing in the halls. Of Eureka's palace, music fills the walls. Of splendor where the Sardan knew 136 enthroned. His hours is whiling by the maidens zoned. A whirling garland chanting forth a song. Accompanied with harps thus sang the throng. 
he Abani's wisdom chant and sing. To Ereka's king our mighty Sar. 137. When he did he Abani bring. Who now to Erek comes afar. He taught him then all hidden things. Of Ki 138 or bright Samu 139 above. That to the Moody 140 mystery brings. Oh, how he Abani we shall love. Chorus. Then sing with joy ye Kawakai. 141. The Kaujie 142 chant with waving arms. The Ninyat 143 sing Oannasi 144. Give to our Sar your sweetest charms. All knowledge that is visible. Hiabani holds it in his glance. Sees visions inconceivable. The Z 145 is wizard eyes entrance. Sweet peace he brings from troubled dreams. He copies to El Litardu SI, 146. From a far road by mountain streams. Then sing with joy ye Kawakai. Chorus. Then sing with joy ye Kawakai. The Kaujie chant with waving arms. The Ninyat sing in Anasiai. Give to our Sar your sweetest charms. E'en all that on the tablet rests. In Ereka's tower, the Subi Uri 147. The beautiful, with glorious crests. He wrote for far posterity. We plead with him to leave us not. But Z Gabri 148 him led away. When our great showman 149 joy us brought. And Elam fled to the blue sea. Chorus. Then sing with joy ye Kawakai. ILGS a kiss at 150 from above. The Ni Nit sing in Anasi I. Oh, how he Abani we shall love. The maidens note their monarch's moody face. And turn their songs to him with easy grace. Of their great ruler tune a joyous lay. Ere it oft into his eyes hurled glances gay. And trumpets join the chorus, rolling drums. And wild applause from all the chieftains comes. Till the grave seers and counselors now cry. In praise of him they love so tenderly. With arms upraised the mighty chorus join. Until his heart is filled with joy divine. And thus they sing with more than royal praise. Their love for him in every face doth blaze. Column 2 Songs in praise of Isdabar and Hiabani as sung by the Kawakai. Our Isdabar dear Erek raised. From her distress, when she did mourn. With joy his glorious name be praised. Of a great warrior's daughter born. And Bel in his own might, him arms. To Ereka's sons and daughters save. What other Sar hath glorious charms? Like his, who saved proud Elam slave. Chorus. No rival hath our mighty Sar. Thy symbols strike and raise the cry. All hail. All hail. Great Isdabar. His deeds immortal glorify. Our Isdabar our sons preserves. To all our fathers day and night. And Ereka's ruler well deserves. Our highest praise, whose matchless might. Delights the gods. All hail our Sar. Whose firmness, wisdom need no praise. Queen Donat's son, our Isdabar. His glory to the Sami 151 rays. Chorus. Of a great warrior's daughter born. The gods clothe him with matchless might. His glory greets the coming morn. Oh, how in him we all delight. And thus of seer Hiabani they now chant. His birth and history and Hyamal haunt. Who can compare with thee, O Nin? 152. The son of Bel, thy hands didst lay. Upon er you are you, thine own queen. With glory crowned her on that day. To her thy strength did give, and blessed. Her with thy love and a dear son. With a new strength within his breast. And Ninip sped then to his throne. When Queen Aryuaryu hears her lord. From Ereka's city far has gone. She bows her head upon the sword. With pleading hands in woe doth moan. 
and to Hiabani she gave birth. The warrior, great Ninip's son, whose fame is spread through all the earth. The queen with her own maids alone, retired within her palace walls, for purity in Ereka's halls. Like the corn god his face concealed, of men and countries he possessed. Great wisdom by the gods revealed. As Na 153 the god, his limbs were dressed. With wild gazelles he ate his food. While roaming with them in the night. For days he wandered in the wood. And Biuhirt I 154 him delight. The ZRE 155 Hiabani loves. That play within the running streams. With Zitam ATI 156 he roves. Upon the sands in warm sunbeams. The prince returns, O Sar. The herald said. And lo before the throne he bowed his head. Our Zaidu, the bewitcher of all men. Doth unsuccessful to us come again. Before the cave the seer confronted him. Three days where Karsak's snowy brow doth gleam. Hiabani with his beast in his cave went. And Zaidu waited, but his courage spent. When he beheld the seer and beast remain. Within the cave, and all his words were vain. The prince remains without with downcast face. And beg of thee, his sar, thy sovereign grace. The king to all the maidens waves his hand. Then vanishes from sight the choral band. Column 3. Zaida's return, and his instruction to take two maids with him to entice the seer from his cave. Prince Zaida prostrate bows before the sar. Arises, thus narrates to Isdabar. Thy sovereign, Zaidu hath his king obeyed. The royal mission I have thus essayed. As a news 157 soldier. I undaunted tried. To urge my mission which the seer denied. I firmly met the beast that with him came. Unmanly fear, confess I to my shame. Came o'er me when I first beheld the beast. In vain I plead, and in despair I ceased. When he refused, and angry from me passed. Within his cave. Where cliffs and rocks are massed. I climbed, but the wild entrance did not gain. And for advice have I returned again. Tis well, my son, the Tsar Tezida said. Thy wisdom I commend for thy young head. Again upon thy mission thou must go. His might and strength of purpose, thou dost know. Before a maiden's charms will flee away. For he doth love the ZGA Bri 158 that play. Within the mountain gorges. Turn thy face. Again with manly portents. For our grace. Thine embassy with two of our sweet maids. Who oft shall cheer thee through the mountain glades. Whom thou shalt lead before Hiabani's den. With their bright charms exposed within the glen. Take Samkatu and sweet Karamatu. They will entice the seer when he shall view. Their charms displayed before his wondering eyes. With Samka, joy, the seer you will surprise. Karam too will thy plan successful end. To her seductive glance his pride will bend. Sweet Samka's charms are known, she is our joy. As Ishtar's aid her charms ne'er cloy. Karen too with her perfect face and form. The hearts of all our court doth take by storm. When joys by our sweet Samka are distilled. Karen too's love o'ercomes us till we yield. Thus, armed with love's seduction and her joy. The greatest powers of earth thou dost employ. No flesh can face them but a heart of stone. And all the world doth lie before them prone. Three days Prince Zaidu sat with Karen too. Before the cave within Hiabani's view. Beside the pool they waited for the seer. From Erek three days journey brought them here. But where hath joy, sweet Samka, roving gone? When they arrived at setting of the sun. She disappeared within with waving arms. With bright locks flowing she displayed her charms. As some sweet Zirayu did young Samka seem. A thing of beauty of some mystic dream. Column 4. The two maidens entice the seer. 
Thus in Hiabani's cave the maiden went. And o'er the sleeping seer her form she bent. O'er him who with gazelles oft eats his food. O'er him who drinks with Buri 159 in the wood. O'er him who loves the Ziri of them dreams. And sports with them within the mountain streams. And when the gay enticer saw the seer. Unconscious sleeping with sweet joy so near. She clasped him to her breast and kissed his brow. The seer awakes, with wonder eyes her now. Thy glory thou hast brought to me, he saith. Sweet Zirayu comes to me with fragrant breath. And with delight he eyes her beauteous form. His breast warm moved by the enticer's charm. He springs upon his feet and her pursues. She laughing flees, to sport with him doth choose. And now he eyes his hairy body, arms. Compared to Samka's snowy godlike charms. She give to him her freshness, blooming youth. She laughing comes again to him, forsooth. Her glorious arms she opens, flees away. While he doth follow the enticer gay. He seizes, kisses, takes away her breath. And she falls to the ground perhaps in death. He thinks, and o'er her leans where she now lay. At last she breathes, and springs, and flees away. But he the sport enjoys, and her pursues. But glancing back his arms she doth refuse. And thus three days and four of nights she played. For of Hiabani's love she was afraid. Her joyous company doth him inspire. For Samka, joy, and love, and wild desire. He was not satisfied unless her form. Remained before him with her endless charm. But when his bori of the field the sight. Beheld, the wild gazelles fled in affright. And now without the cave they came in view. Of Zaidu waiting with sweet Karim too. And when Hiabani saw the rounded form. Of bright Karim too, her voluptuous charm. Drew him to her, and at her feet he sate. With wistful face, resigned to any fate. Karim too, smiling sweetly, bent her head. Enticing him the tempter coyly said. Hiabani, like a famous god thou art. Why with these creeping things doth sleep thy heart? Come thou with me to Erek Subiuri 160. To Anu's temple Elitardu Si. And Ishtar's city where great Isdabar. Doth reign, the glorious giant king of war. Whose mighty strength above his chiefs doth tower. Come see our giant king of matchless power. Her flashing eyes half languid pierced the seer. Until his first resolves all disappear. And rising to his feet his eyes he turned. Toward sweet joy, 161 whose love for him yet burned. And eyeing both with beaming face he saith. With Samka's love the seer hath pledged his faith. And I will go to Elitardu si. Great Anu's seat and Ishtar's where with thee. I will behold the giant Isdabar. Whose fame is known to me as king of war. And I will meet him there, and test the power. Of him whose fame above all men doth tower. Amid Danu 162 to Erek I will take. To see if he its mighty strength can break. In these wild caves its strength has mighty grown. If he the beast destroys, I will make known. His dream to him e'en all the seer doth know. And now with thee to Erek I will go. Column V, festival in honor of Hiabani, who arrives at Erek interpretation of the dream. The sounds of wild rejoicing now arise. Hiabani comes. Resound the joyful cries. And through the gates of Erek Suburi. Now file the chieftains, Sukuli Ruby.163. A festival in honor of their guest. The Tsar proclaims, and Erek gaily drayest. Her welcome warm extends to the famed seer. The maidens, Erek's daughters, now appear. With richest kirtles gaily decked with flowers. And on his head they rain their rosy showers. Rejoicing sing, while harps and cymbals play and laud him to the skies in their sweet way. And mingling with their joy, their monarch rode. Before the seer, who stately after strode. 
beside his beast, and next the men of fame. The maids thus chant high honours to his name. A prince we make thee, mighty seer. Be filled with joy and royal cheer. All hail to Eureka's seer. Whom day and night our Tsar hath sought. O banish fear. For he taught. The seer, his glory wrought. He comes. Whom Samus loves as gold. To erect grace, our city old. All wisdom he doth hold. Great he doth to him unfold. All that remains to man untold. Give him the chain of gold. He cometh from the Zagabri. To our dear Erek Subiuri. He Abani glorify. Thy dream he will reveal, O Sar. Its meaning show to Isdabar. Victorious king of war. Within the council halls now lead the seers. With trepidation and with many fears. To hear the seer explain their monarch's dream. Beside the royal throne he sits supreme. Among the seers, the Tsar, his scribe commands. To read his dream recorded as it stands. In Ereka's GI. 164 Who reads it to the seer? Who answers thus? In this there doth appear. A God, whose ardent love will lead to deeds. Of hate against thee, Tsar, thy present needs. Are great, O King. As fire this love will burn. Until the wicked seven one hundred and sixty-five on thee turn. And blood, alone, will not their fury sate. The gods will hurl upon thee some dread fate. In silence, Isdabar the warning heard. His blood with terror froze, and then was stirred. By passions wild, when he recalled the scene. Of Ishtar's love for him by man unseen. When she so wildly then proclaimed her love. And now with hate his utmost soul doth move. And her bright form to a black Dalku 166 turned. And furious passions on his features burned. And then of the first dream he thought, and light. Across his vision broke. Tis true. Aright. Thy seer hath read. For Ishtar came to me. In the first dream, her face e'en yet I see. I, more. Her lips to mine again then fell. Her arms I felt around me breath too well. I know. Of fragrance, while perfume arose. Around my dream and fled not at the close. As frankincense and myrrh it lingered, when. I woke. Ah yes. The queen will come again. Then to his counselor who wondering stood. Nor heard his murmuring, but saw subdued. His features were, at first, and then, they grand. Became with settled hate, he raised his hand. Tis true. He said, reward oil him bestow. Then to the waiting feast we all shall go. Column 6. Isdabar slays the Medanyu in the festive hall, and Hiabani declares him to be a god. The guests are seated round the festal board. Hiabani takes his seat beside his lord. The choicest viands of the wealthy plain. Before them placed and fishes of the main. With wines and cordials, juices rich and rare. The chieftains all enjoy the royal fare. This day, with Isdabar they laugh and joke. Mid courtesies and mirth, and oft provoke. The ringing merry laughter through the halls. When all are satisfied within the walls. Their fill have eaten of the royal fare. With wine they banish from them every care. The Suku Li 167 with tinkling bells proclaim. Our Tsar would speak. Our King of mighty fame. Who says, my chieftains, lords, our seer requests. A test of strength before assembled guests. Unarmed requires your Sardan new to slay. The Midden new 168 which he hath brought today. So stand aside, my friends, behold the test. Your Sar will satisfy his seer and guest. The monster now is brought before the king. He abani him unchains to let him spring. Upon the giant king. His chieftains stand. In terror looking at their monarch grand. 
who smiling stands, his eyes on the beast fixed. While they in wildest terror are transfixed. He Abani claps his hands towards the king. And the wild beast upon his form doth spring. The giant grasps its throat in high mid-air. 169 and holds it, neath his arm without a fear. With sullen choking roars it struggling dies. While shouts of joy from all the guests arise. The mighty deed of strength the seer appalls. And at the feet of Isdabar he falls. Immortal king. Illustrious of men. Thy glorious strength reveals the gods again. On earth. To thee I bow in reverent fear. A god return thou art. O Erech, here. Of kingdoms thou art blessed with grandest fame. That thou among thy kings a god can name. Again they gathered round the festal board. And joy and revelry they soon restored. The revels high are raised o'er sparkling wine. Through all the night they praise their king divine. Tablet 4, Column I The Annual Sale of the Maidens of Babylon We have included in Tablet 4 Tablets V and 6 of the original, as classified by Mr. Sace. Hail Holy Union! Wedded love on earth! The highest bliss which crowns us from our birth! Our joy! The mainspring of our life and aims! Our great incentive when sweet love inflames. Our hearts to glorious deeds and ever wreaths. Around our brows, the happy smile that breathes. Sweet fragrance from the home of holy love. And arms us with a courage from above. O oh woman! Woman! Weave thy love around. Thy chosen lover, who in thee hath found. A loveliness and purity so sweet that he doth watch for coming of the feet. That brings him happiness and thrill his heart. For one, of all thy kind who can impart, to him the holiest bliss, the sweetest joy, that e'er can crown his life so tenderly. He worships thee within a holy fane. Let not his hope and joy be all in vain. O thou, sweet queen, we crown thee in our homes and give to thee our love that holy comes, from heaven to inspire and bless our lives. For this mankind all hope to take pure wives, to sacredest of all our temples, shrines, and keep thee pure within sweet love's confines, that we may worship thee, and daily bring, devotions to our altar to thee sing, our orisons of praise, and sacred keep, our homes till we shall softly drop asleep. Within the arms we love so tenderly. And carry with us a sweet memory. Of purity and bliss that blessed our lives. And children gave from sweetest of pure wives. Thou art our all. O holy woman, pure. Forever may thy charms on earth endure. O, trample not upon thy husband's love. For true devotion he doth daily prove. O, oh, shackle not his feet in life's fierce strife. His weary shoulders burden, blast his life. Or palsy those dear hands that work for thee. And fill his eyes with tears of agony. Till love shall turn as acid to his teeth. And thorns shall tear his side with hellish wreath. And daggers pierce his heart, and ice his soul. And thou become to him a hated ghoul. 170 What married woman is untainted? pure. She, who when married spreads for men no higher. Bestows caresses on no man but him. Who is her husband? She who doth not trim. Her form to catch the vulgar gaze, nor paints. Herself, or in her husband's absence taunts. Not her sweet purity, exposes not. Her form undraped, whose veil no freeman ought. Has raised. 171 or shows her face to others then. Her slaves, and loves alone her husbandman. She who has never moistened her pure lips. With liquors that intoxicate, 172 nor sips. With others joys that sacred are alone. To him, her strength. Who claims her as his own. O beauty, purity, 
my theme inspire. To woman's love of old, my muse aspire. When her sweet charms were equally bestowed. And fairest of the sex with hopes imbued. Of capturing men of wealth and lives of ease. When loveliness at public sale 173 doth please. The nobles of the land to wealth bestow. Upon ill-favored sisters. Maids of woe. Who claimed no beauty, nor had lovely charms. When crones and hags, and maids with uncouth forms. Secured a husbandman despite of fate. And love redeemed them from the arms of hate. The proclamation Isdabar had made. To bring to the great plaza every maid. For Beltis' feast and Hergel's now arrives. When maidens are selected as the wives. Of noblemen or burghers of the towns. And cities of the kingdom. When wealth crowns. The nobles richest, ever as of old. With beauty they have purchased with their gold. The festival, the Sabbat II 174 hath come. The Sabbat II of Elul. Hear the hum. Of voices filling Eureka's streets. The maids are coming, how each gaily prates. The day and hour has come for them to stand. And meet the bidders from all summer's land. The day that ends their maidenhood, and brings. Them joy or not. Oh, how the poor young things. With throbbing hearts approach yon gathering throng. To hear their fate pronounced, but is it wrong? The custom old, Acadia thinks is good. They all are young and fresh with maidenhood. The ugly ones as well, shall husbands have. And their young lives from shame thus they will save. No aged maids shall pass from yonder throng. With bitterness, their hearts unuttered song. For some dear love to end their joyless woe. And longings unallayed that e'er may flow. But love. Oh, where art thou? Art thou a thing? That gold may buy. Doth lucre thy bright wing. Unfold to hover over human hearts. Oh, no. Thy presence to our soul imparts. A sweeter joy than selfishness can give. Thou givest love that thou mayst love receive. Nor asking aught of wealth, of rank, or fame. True love in palace, hovel, is the same. Sweet joy, the holiest of sacred things. For this we worship Ishtar, for she brings. Us happiness, when we ourselves forget. In the dear arms we love. No coronet. Of power, or countless gold, or rank, or fame. Or aught that life can give, or tongue can name. Can reach the heart that loyally doth love. Nor hopes of heaven, nor fears of hell can move. Mayhap, this sabatu, some lover may. All wealth he claims abandon on this day. For the dear heart that seeming pleads to him. While her fond glistening eyes shall on him gleam. A look, a glance. When mingling souls speak love. Will in his breast undying longings move. And let us hope that when the youths have lain 175. They're all before the herald, that no men. Who see their sacrifice will rob their hearts. Of all that gives them joy or bliss imparts. Or that this day alone will maiden see. Who have not loved, and they will happy be. With him who purchases her as his wife. Or proud young beauties will enjoy the strife. Of bidders to secure their lovely charms. And love may bring their husbands to their arms. The day is sacred, dedicated old. To love and strength, when loving arms shall fold. A vigorous husband to a maiden's breast. Where she may ever stay and safely rest. The day of Ishtar, queen of love. The day. Of Nurgle, the strong god, to whom they pray. For strength to bless with vigor Akkad sons. For many anxious years this day atones. 176 This day their sar the flesh of birds eats not. Nor food profaned by fire this day, nor aught. Of labor may perform nor zubat 177 change. Nor snowy kubarare 178 anew arrange. 
a sacrifice he offers not, nor rides. Upon his chariot this day, nor guides. His realm's affairs, and his tertan new rests. Of soldiers, and of orders, he divests. His mind, and even though disease may fall. Upon him, remedies he may not call. The temple he shall enter in the night. And pray that Ishtar's favor may delight. His heart. And lift his voice in holy prayer. In Nurgle's temple rest from every care. Where he before the holy altar bends. With lifted hands, his soul's petition sends. Around the square the palms and cedars shine. And bowers of roses cluster round divine. Beneath an arch of myrtles, climbing vines. And canopy with wreathing flowers it shines. There stands a wondrous garland wreathed throne. Where maids are gathered, each unmarried one. The timid maids and bold of Babylon. Are each in turn led to the rosy throne. The crowd of bidders round the herald stand. The richest and the poorest of the land. The queen of Akkad's maids doth now appear. We see the burnished chariot coming near. Ten beauteous bays with proud steps, nodding plumes. Come first, behind, a train of nobles comes. And now we see the close drawn canopy. Thrown back by slaves, who step aside, that she. The queen of beauty crowned with lilies, rose. May hear a light. And see. She queenly goes. With dainty steps between the noblemen. Who stand on either side the queen. Of beauty of the plains, who first this day. Shall reign upon the throne, and lead the way. For all the maids who shall be bought for gold. And thus the first upon the throne is sold. She takes her seat beneath the canopy. Upon the throne high raised, that all may see. As she her veil of fine spun gold flings back. From her sweet face and o'er her ringlets black. Her large dark eyes, soft as a wild gazelle's. Upon the richest noble's dart appeals. Her bosom throbs neath gems and snowy lace. And robes of broidered satin, velvets, grace. Her beauty with their pearly folds that fall. Around her form. Hark! Hear the herald's call. Behold this pearl. My lords and noblemen. And who will bid for her as wife, my men? Anabilti Tirasi Ash at Ka. 179. Akaduk Tirasi Ana Sasa, 180. You sinu bilti kurasi. 181 2 cried. Sal suta bilti. 182 nobles 3 replied. And 4, and 5, and 6, till 1 bid 10. A vast amount of gold for noblemen. But see. The bidders in excitement stand. Around a youth who cries with lifted hand. And features pale and stern, who now began. To bid against a wealthy nobleman. Whose countless herds graze far upon the plain. His laden ships that ride upon the main. He counts by scores. He turns his evil eyes. And wolfish face upon the youth and cries. Commiserate. 183 The lover answering says. Esra. 184 You Salesa. 185 Then brays. The gray haired lover. You Urbaha. 186 cries. The youth, and still the nobleman defies. Who answers coolly, Kausae, 187 and eyes. The anxious youth, who wildly, Miha, 188 cries. Mine I mine. She is. Though you Alipu 189 inch bid. A fool thou art, the noble, leaving said. One hundred talents for a maid. He sneered. And in the crowd he growling disappeared. The measures filled with shining gold are brought. And thus the loveliest of all is bought. The next in beauty on the throne is sold. And thus the beautiful are sold for gold. The richest thus select the beautiful. The poor must take alone the dutiful. 
and homely with a dower which beauty bought. And ugliness with gold becomes his lot. The ugliest, unsightly, and deformed, is now brought forth. With many wriggles squirmed. She to the throne, where beauty late had sat. Her ugliness distorted thus, whereat. The herald cries. Who will this woman take? With smallest dowry. She can cook and bake. And many household duties well perform. Although she does not claim a beauty's charm. Who wants a wife? The ugly crone with blinks. Doth hideous look, till every bitter shrinks. A sorry spectacle, misshapen, gross. She is, and bitters now are at a loss. How much to ask to take the hag to wife? At last one cries. Five bilty, one hundred and ninety for relief. Of herald I will take, to start the bid. And four of bilty, I'll take, with the maid. Three and a half, one cries with shaking head. And she is yours, my man, the herald said. And thus she bought a husband and a home. And so the scarecrows, scraggy ones, now come. In turn. The lean, ill-favored, gawky, bald. Long-nosed, uncouth, raw-boned, and those with scald. And freckled, frozy, rickety in squat. The stumpy, bandy-legged, gaunt, each bought. A man. Though ugly as a toad, they sold. For every man with her received his gold. The heaped-up gold which beauteous maids had brought. Is thus proportioned to the bidder's lot. The grisly, blear-eyed, every one is sold. And husbands purchased for a pile of gold. And happiness diffused throughout the land. For when the maid refused her husband's hand. She might return by paying back the gold. And every maid who thus for wife was sold. Received a bond from him who purchased her. To wed her as his wife, or else incur. The forfeit of his bond, and thus no maids. In all the land were found as grumbling jades. Whose fate it was to have no husbandman. For every woman had a husband then. Column 2. Council in the palace. The seers on silver couches round the throne. The hangings of the carved lintel throne. Aside, the heralds cried, the Tsar. The Tsar. The council opens our King Isdabar. The Tsar walked o'er the velvets to his throne. Of gold inlaid with gems. A vassal prone. Before the Tsar now placed the stool of gold. Arranged his royal robes with glittering fold. Of laces, fringes rich and wove with pearls. Embroidered with quaint figures, curious twirls. Behind the throne a prince of royal blood. Arrayed in courtly splendor, waiting stood. And gently waved a jeweled fan aloft. Above the Tsar's tiara, carpet soft. From Akkad's looms the varied tilings bright. In tasteful order, part conceal from sight. The glittering pillars stand with gold o'erlaid. In rows throughout the room to the arcade. Within the entrance from a columned hall. The ivory graven panels on the wall. On every side are set in solid gold. The canopy chased golden pillars hold. Above the throne, and emeralds, and gems. Flash from the counselor's rich diadems. In silence all await the monarch's sign. This council hath been called, the hour is thine. To counsel with thy king upon a plan. Of conquest of our foes, who ride this plain. Unchecked around, these sooty should be driven. From Sumer's plain. Have ye our wrongs forgiven? Kumbaba hath enjoyed great Akkad spoils. Too long, with him we end these long turmoils. What sayest thou, Hiabani, all my seers? Hath Akkad not her chariots and spears? Then one among the wisest seers arose. To save our precious tune which hourly flows. He should our seer, Rabsakai 191 first invite. To lay his plans before the Tsar, and light. May break across our vision. I confess. Great obstacles I see, 
but acquiesce. In any plan you deem may bring success. The gods, I feel our cause will gladly bless. Another spoke, and all agree at last. To hear the seer whose wisdom all surpassed. Hiabani modestly arose and said. And gracefully to all inclined his head. O Sar! Thy seer will gladly counsel give. To thee, and all our seers, my thanks receive. For thy great confidence in my poor skill. To crush our foes who every country fill. I with the Tsar agree that we should strike. A blow against the rival king, who like. Our Tsar, is a great giant king, and lives. Within a mountain castle, whence he grieves. All nations by his tyranny. And reigns. With haughty power from Karsak to these plains. I'll lead the way, my Tsar, to his wild home. Tis twenty cas pu 192 hence, if you will come. A wall surrounds his castle in a wood. With brazen gates strong fastened. I have stood. Beneath the lofty pines which dwindle these. To shrubs that grow in parks as ornate trees. The mighty walls will reach six gars 193 in height. And two in breadth, like Dnieper's 194 to the sight. And when you go, take with you many mules. With men to bring the spoils, and needed tools. To break the gates, his castle overthrow. To lose no time, tomorrow we should go. To erect, pines and cedars we can bring. With all the wealth of Elam's giant king. And erect fill with glorious parks and halls. Remove these Manubani, 195 ruined walls. Take to your hearts, ye seers, poor Erekka's wrongs. Her fall, the bards of Elam sing in songs. I love dear Erek, may her towers shine. He seized his harp, thus sung the seer divine. O Erek! Thy bright plains I love. Although from thee thy seer did rove. My heart remained with thee. The foe destroyed thy beauteous towers. Samu forgot to rain her showers. And could I happy be? Mine eyes beheld thy fallen gates. Thy blood warm flowing in thy streets. My heart was broken then. I raised mine eyes and saw thy sar. In glory on his steed of war. And joy returned again. I saw the foe in wild dismay. Before him flee that glorious day. With joy I heard the cry. A victory resound afar. Saw Elam crushed neath Akkad's car. I shouted, Victory! Away! Till birds of prey shall rend. His flesh and haughty Elam bend. Before our mighty Sar. Beneath his forest of pine trees. The battle cry then loudly raise. We follow Isdabar. And may the birds of prey surround. Kumbaba stretched upon the ground. Destroy his body there. And Isdabar alone be king. And all his people joyful sing. With glory crown him here. All hail. All hail. Our giant king. The Amarantai 196 for him bring. To crown him, crown him here. As king of Akkad and Sudu. And all the land of Subartu. So saith he seer. The counselors and chieftains wildly cry. Around the throne, all hail is Usari. Of Subartu. And shouting leave the halls. To summon Akkad soldiers from the walls. To hear the war proclaimed against their foes. And Akkad's war cry from them loud arose. King Isdabar Hiabani warmly pressed. Within his arms upon his throbbing breast. And said, Let us to the war temple go. That all the gods their favor may bestow. The seer replied, Tis well. Then let us wend. Our way, and at the altar we will bend. To Ishtar's temple, where our goddess queen. Doth reign, seek her propitious favor, then. In Samus holy temple pray for aid. To crush our foe. With glory on each blade. 
our hands will carry victory in war. The chiefs, without the temple, join their Tsar. Column 3. The king worships at the shrine of Ishtar. 197 The richest and the poorest here must stay. Each proud or humble maid must take her way. To Ishtar's temple grand, a lofty shrine. With youth and beauty seek her aid divine. Some drive in covered chariots of gold. With courtly trains come to the temple old. With ribbons on their brows all take their seats. The rich are made of nobles, princes, waits. Within grand chambers for the nobler maids. The rest all sit within the shrine's arcades. Thus fill the temple with sweet beauties, crones. The latest maids are the most timid ones. In rows the maidens sat along the halls. And vestibules, on couches, where the walls. Were carved with mystic signs of Ishtar's feast. Till at the inner shrine the carving ceased. Amid the crowd long silken cords were strung. To mark the paths, and to the pillows clung. The king through the great crowd now pressed his way. Toward the inner shrine, where he may pray. The jeweled maidens on the cushioned seats. Now babbling hailed the king, and each entreats. For sacred service, silver, or of gold. And to him, all, their sweetest charms unfold. Sonic lovely were, in tears besought and cried. And many would a blooming bride provide. While others were deformed and homely, old. As spinsters still remained, till now grown bold. They raised their bony arms aloft and bald. Some hideous were with harshest voices squalled. And hags like Dalkai from the underworld. Their curses deep, growled forth from where they curled. But these were few and silent soon became. And hid their ugliness away in shame. For years some maids had waited day and night. But beauty hides the ugly ones from sight. The king astounded, eyed them seated round. Beneath their gaze his eyes fell to the ground. And hath great Akkad lost so many sons. And left so many maids unmarried ones. He eyed the image where the goddess stood. Upon a pedestal of cedar wood. Erlaid with gold and pearls and Ukaini stones. And near it stands the altar with its cones. Of gold adorned with gems and solid pearls. And from the golden censer incense curls. Beside the altar stands a table grand. Of solid metal carved with skillful hand. Upon it stands a mass of golden ware. With wines and fruits which pious hands prepare. The walls are glistening with gold and gems. The priestesses all wear rich diadems. The Tsar now eyes the maidens, while they gaze. Thus they expect and wait, while he surveys. And see! He takes from them a charming girt. With Ishtar's eyes and perfect form, the pearl. Of beauty of them all. Turns to the shrine. When in her lap he drops a golden coin. And says, The goddess Ishtar, prosper thee. 198. She springs, for she from Ishtar's halls is free. And kneels and weeps before the monarch's feet. O great and mighty Tsar I thee entreat. My will is thine, but all my sisters free. Behold my sisters here imploring thee. The king gazed at the beauteous pleading face. Which roused within his breast the noble race. Before her heavenly charms transfixed he stood. Before her heavenly charms transfixed he stood. Tis well. My daughter, I the favor grant. And to the priestess said, Let here be sent. Great coffers filled with gold. For I release. These maids. Let all their weary waiting cease. The price I'll send by messengers to thee. And all rejoicing sing a psalmody. A ring of maidens round the image forms. With flashing eyes they sing, with waving arms. A wilderness of snowy arms and feet. To song and dance the holy measure beat. A mass of waving ringlets, sparkling eyes. In wildest transport round each maiden flies. The measure keeps to sacred psalmody. 
with music ravishing, sweet melody. The priestess leads for them the holy hymn. Thus sing they, measure keep with body, limb. 199 inch let length of days, long lasting years. With sword of power, extend his holy life. With years extended full of glory, shine. Preeminent above all kings in strife. O, oh, clothe our King, our Lord, with strength divine. Who with such gifts to gods appears. Let his great empire's limits be. Now vast and wide, enlarged, and may he reign. Till it shall spread before his eyes complete. Supreme above all kings. May he attain. To silver hairs, old age, and nations greet. Our sovereign in his royalty. When gifts are ended of life's days. The feasts of the land of the silver sky. With bliss, the blessed abode refulgent courts. May he enjoy through all eternity. Where light of happy fields with joy transports. And dwell in life eternal, holy there. In presence of the gods with sacred cheer. With Asur's gods walk blessed ways. When they have ended all their joyful song. They gratefully around their monarch throng. And kneeling at his feet, they bathe his hands. With tears of joy, and kiss the broidered bands. Of his bright robes, then joyous haste away. And Ereka's shame was ended on that day. And now the Tsar as his libation pours. The sparkling sacred wine before the doors. That lead to Ishtar's glorious inner shrine. He bows before her golden form divine. Thus prays. Two hundred, in thy fair shrine I bow to thee. O light of heaven! Bright thy majesty! As glowing flames upon the world doth dawn. Bright goddess of the earth, thy fixed abode. Who dawned upon the earth a glorious god. With thee prosperity, hath ever gone. To gild the towers of cities of mankind. Thou warrior's god, who rideth on the wind. As a hyena fierce thou sendest war. And as a lion comes thy raging car. Each day thou rulest from thy canopy. That spreads above in glory, shines for thee. O come, exalted goddess of the sun. 201 Against the tyrant king I go to war. Attend mine arms, O queen. With radiant car. Of battles. Ride upon the giant king. With thy bright, fiery chargers. Valor bring. To me at rising of the glistening car. Of Samus, send attendants fierce of war. But goddess Mamnutu of fate and death. Oh, keep away from me her blasting breath. Let Samus fix the hour with favor thine. And o'er mine unknown path, O oh ride divine. Thy servant strengthen with thy godly power. That he invincible in war may tower. Against thy chosen city's greatest foe. Who brought on Erech all her deepest woe. And from the inner shrine with curtains hung. The oracle of Ishtar sweetly sung. O king of vast unnumbered countries, hear. Thine enemy come Baba do not fear. My hands will waft the winds for thee. Thus I reveal. Come Baba falls. Thine enemy. Nor aught conceal. The harvest month two hundred and two propitious shines. Array great Akkad's battle lines. Before thy feet thy queen descends. Before thy will thine Ishtar bends. To fight thine enemy. To war I go with thee. My word is spoken, thou hast heard. For thee, my favor thou hast stirred. As I am Ishtar of mine or divine. Thine enemy shall fall. Be glory thine. Before mine Isdabar I go. And at thy side direct thy blow. I go with thee, fear not, my king. For every doubt and fear I bring. Relief, to thy heart rest. Of Sars, I love thee best. Column 4 The king goes from Ishtar's temple to the temple of Samus. He rose and raised the pendant mystic charms. And kissed them, and the jewels of her arms. And ornaments upon her breast divine. 
and then her crown with jewels iridine. He placed upon his brow, and it returned. And from the shrine in reverence he turned. To Samus' temple all the chiefs of war. And seers, Pati S.I., go with Isdabar. Before the fire he stands where holy burns. The flames of Samus. In a vase he turns. The crimson wine, to Samus, God, he pours. Libation, and his favor thus implores. O Samus, why hast thou established, raised? Me in thy heart, protected? Men have praised. Thee, Holy One. My expedition bless. In thine own will, O God, I acquiesce. I go, O Samus, on a path afar. Against Kumbaba I declare this war. The battle's issue thou alone dost know. Or if success attends me where I go. The way is long, O may thy son return. From the vast pine tree forest, I would earn. For erect glory and renown. Destroy. Kumbaba and his towers. He doth annoy. All nations, and is evil to thy sight. Tomorrow I will go, O send thy light. Upon my standards, and dark Ninazu. Keep thou away, that I may weary view. Mine enemies, and fix for me the hour. When I shall strike and crush Kumbaba's power. To all the gods I humbly pray. To Isdabar propitious be. 203 Asur Samus you Marduk you. Ana Sar Bel and I Alikar you be you. And thus the oracle with sweetest voice. To him replied, and made his heart rejoice. Fear not, O Isdabar. For I am Bel, thy strength in war. 204. A heart of strength give I to thee. To trust, we can but faithful be. As thou hast shown to me. The sixty gods, our strongest ones. Will guide thy path where'er it runs. The moon god on thy right shall ride. And Samus on thy left shall guide. The sixty gods thy will commands. To crush Kumbaba's bands. In man alone, do not confide. Thine eyes turn to the gods. Who rule from their abodes. And trust in heaven where powers abide. With joyous heart the Tsar comes from the shrine. To bathe his brow in Samus rays divine. Upon the pyramid he stands and views. The scene below with its bright varied hues. A peerless pile the temple grandly shone. With marble, gold, and silver in the sun. In seven stages rose above the walls. With archways vast and polished pillared halls. A marble portico surrounds the mass. With sculptured columns, banisters of brass. And winding stairways round the stage's side. Grand temples piled on temples upward glide. A mass of colors like the rainbow hues. Thus proudly rise from breezy avenues. The brazen gates lead to the temple's side. The stairs ascend and up the stages glide. The basement painted of the darkest blue. Is passed by steps ascending till we view. From them the second stage of orange hue. And crimson third. From thence a glorious view. A thousand turrets far beneath, is spread. O'er lofty walls, and fields, and grassy mead. The golden harvests sweep away in sight. And orchards, vineyards, on the left and right. Euphrates stream as a broad silver band. Sweeps grandly through the glowing golden land. Till like a thread of silver still in sight. It meets the tigress gleaming in the light. That spreads along the glorious bending skies. The brightest vault of all the emperies. Now rested from the cushioned seats we rise. And to the stairway turn again our eyes. The fourth stage plated o'er with beaten gold. We pass, and topaz fifth till we behold. The sixth of azure blue. To seventh glide. That glows with silvery summit where reside. The gods, within a shrine of silvery sheen. Which brightly glows, and from afar is seen. Without the temple, burnished silver shines. 
within, pure gold and gems in rare designs. Column V, Expedition Against Kumbaba, and Battle in the Black Forest. At early dawn the shining ranks are massed. And Erek echoes with the trumpet's blast. The chosen men of Erek are in line. And Ishtar in her car above doth shine. The blazing standards high with shouts are raised. As Samus' car above Grand Summer blazed. The march they sound at Isdabar's command. And thus they start for King Kumbaba's land. The gods in bright array above them shine. By Ishtar led, with Samus, Moon God Sin. On either sidle with Meridak and Bel. And Ninip, Nurgal, Nusku with his spell. The sixty gods on chargers of the skies. And Ishtar's chariot before them flies. Across Kazina's desert far have come. The armies now have neared Kumbaba's home. Beneath grand forests of tall cedar, pine. And the dark shades near Karsak's brow divine. A brazen gate before them high appeared. And massive walls which their great foe had reared. The mighty gates on heavy pivots hung. They broke, and on their brazen hinges swung. With clanging roars against the solid wall. And sent through all the wilds a clarion call. Within his halls Kumbaba is enthroned. In grand Tulkumba's walls by forests zoned. With her bright palaces and templed shrines. The sanctuaries of the gods, where pines. Sigh on the wafting winds their rich perfumes. Where Elam's god with sullen thunder dooms. From Karsak's brow the wailing nations round. And Elam's, hosts obey the awful sound. The giant here his castled city old. Had strengthened, wrung his tributes, silver, gold. His palace ceiling with pure silver shines. And on his throne of gold from Megan's two hundred and five mines. In all his pride the conqueror exults. With wealth has filled his massive iron vaults. Oft from his marble towers the plain surveys. And sees his foe's most ancient cities blaze. While his pati si lead his allied hosts. And o'er his famous victories he boasts. With Rimsin he allied when Erek fell. The king of Sursa, whose great citadel. Was stormed by Namurabi the great Tsar. Ninrad of Erek, our king Isdabar. Kumbaba's ally was by him o'erthrown. And thus appeared to take Kumbaba's throne. And now within his palace came a sound. That roared through all the forest, shook the ground. Our foes. Our foes. The gate. Hear how it rings. And from his throne the giant furious springs. Ho. Vassals. Sound the trump, tis Isdabar. To arms. Our foes are on us from afar. His weapon seizes, drives his men in fear. Before him with his massive sword and spear. And as a tempest from his lips he pours. His orders, while his warrior steed he spurs. Along his serried lines of bristling spears. Among the pines the army disappears. The men of Akkad now in squadrons form. Arrayed to take Kumbaba's towers by storm. While Isdabar the forest black surveyed. Of pines and cedars thickly grown, and made. A reconnoiter of his hidden foe. The road was straight, afar the turrets glow. With Samus light, and all the gods arrayed. Ride o'er the pines and flash through their dark shade. The glorious blaze of Akkad's glistening spears. One Caspa pass, and now the foe appears. Beneath the deepest shadows of the pines. Kumbaba stands with solid battle lines. Before the marching host of Isdabar. The forest echoes with the shouts of war. As they sweep on with ringing battle cries. Now loudly echoed from the woods and skies. Kararo. Karare. 206 we follow Isdabar. And through the forests fly the bolts of war. The foe beheld the gods in wrath above. And Akkad's charging lines toward them move. But bravely stand to meet the onset fierce. Their mailed armor, shields, 
no arrows pierce. And now in direst conflict meet the mass. And furious still meets ringing bronze and brass. Kumbaba on his mighty steed of war. Above the ranks towers high a giant sar. And sweeps the men of Akkad with his blade. Till to his breast a heap of corpses made. And fiercely urged his men to fight, to die. And Isdabar with helmet towering high. His men has led with fury on the foe and massacres each man with one fell blow. Who dares to stand in front with sword or spear? And fighting by him stands his valiant seer. The gods now rushing from the gleaming sky. With blazing weapons carry victory. The foe no longer stand before the sight. And shouting fly away in wild affright. Their monarch turned and slowly rode away. And Akkad's hosts his men pursue and slay until the forest deep resounds with cries. To save himself each man in terror flies. Column 6. Hand-to-hand -hand conflict of the rival giant's death of Kumbaba. Now the black forest through, the Sar and Seer. Sought for their foe, Kumbaba, far and near. But he had fled when he beheld the gods. In fury rushing from their bright abodes. Now from the battlefield the king and seer the farthest limit of the forest near. And passing on, the Tsar thus to his seer. The gods have filled our foeman's heart with fear. He comes not forth to meet us, neath his walls. But lo! Within their sight, far from his halls. Kumbaba stands beside his steed of snow. Held by his queen, and eyes his coming foe. He Abani cries, Behold the enemy! And with his queen from us disdains to fly. And Isdabar turned to Hiabani, said. My seer, methought this king from us had fled. His army slain or scattered from us fly. But by our hands this monarch here must die. Hiabani eyed Kumbaba, nor replied. Before the queen, who wrung her hands and cried. And Isdabar continued. He, of war. It seems, doth lack in skill, and from afar. He scents the battle, while his fighting men. Their raids oft make, and here return again. His castle we may enter without fear. And thou his queen mayst have who standeth here. And now we end the reign of Elam's throne. So lend thy hand to strike this monarch prone. My friend, if I mistake thee not, for war. Thou art prepared, since thou upon the car. Wast won't to ride in former years now gone. And if he falls, a feast day of the sun. 207 we will appoint, and may the birds of prey. Surround his carcass on this glorious day. But stay. This giant I will slay alone. Although his weight is many guri 208 stone. This giant's form the gods have surely made. An enemy well worthy of my blade. And Isdabar upon his foe advanced. Who waiting stood, and at him fiercely glanced. And not replied, but raised his glory blade. Their furious glance, the giant's queen dismayed. She wildly eyed the rivals towering high. And breathless stood, then quickly turned to fly. As Isdabar upon his heavy shield. Received Kumbaba's stroke, and then doth wield. His massive blade as lightning o'er his head. He strikes the giant's helmet on the mead. Kumbaba, furious, strikes a mighty blow. Which staggers Isdabar, who on his foe. Now springs and rains upon him faster blows. Until his blade with fire continuous glows. Kumbaba caught his blows on sword and shield. With parries. Thrusts returned, and naught would yield. And thus they fought, the peerless kings of war. Now Ishtar downward drove his raging car. And in Kumbaba's eyes her rays she cast. The giant turned his glance it was his last. Unwary caught, his foe has swung his sword. Kumbaba's gory head rolls o'er the sword. Alcove 2. Tablet v. Kalamai, coronation of Isdabar as king of the four races, and appearance of Ishtar in his royal presence, who sues for his hand. 
to Ereka's palaces returns the Tsar. Rich laden with Kumbaba's spoils of war. The land of Ur with grandest glories shines. And gleams with palaces and towers and shrines. The plain with temples, cities, walls is filled. And wide canals, and yellow harvests tilled. Grand erect to the site presents no walls. In ruins laid, but glows with turrets, halls. With splendor proudly shines across the plain. And now with joy he meets his courtly train. Their shouts of welcome rend the gleaming skies. And happiness beams from his people's eyes. Within the walls he rides with kingly pride. And all his chiefs and seers beside him ride. To his grand palace they now lead the way. To crown him king of Sabar to this day. Arrayed in splendor on his throne, the Tsar. Before him eyes the Kassite spoils of war. Kumbaba's crown of gold, and blazing gems. The richest of the Kassite diadems. The royal scepter of all Sabartu. Of Larsa, you are. Cardunia and Sutu. The Tsar upon his brow the crown now bound. Receives the scepter while his courts resound. With shouts for Sardan new of Sabartu. The Tsar of Kiprat Arba 209 and Sutu. Of Sumer, Akkad, Dnieper, Barili, 210. And Irek, Larsa, Myru. And Kusesai. Of Malalenike, Kitu. The sky resounds. For Izubarili, 211 from earth rebounds. For Namurabi, Barbel's king of fire. What king to his great glory can aspire? The Ziggur at you to the skies. His hands have built, where holy fires. To Samus burn. Its flame ne'er dies. To holiness lead man's desires. He opens wide the fiery gates. Of all the gods at Dinter old. Kadingari. 212 this day completes. His grandeur may it far be told. Of our great Tsar whose godly gate. Wide opens heaven's joy for man. Of his Zubarili the great. Who rules from Karsak to the main. Within the entrance to the royal rooms. Queen Ishtar with her train in splendor comes. Her radiant form with glistening gems ablaze. And shining crescent with its glorious rays. Glow with bright heaven's unremitting flame. Thus came the queen of love of godly fame. The richest robe of gods her form enshrines. With every charm of heaven and earth she shines. Of their wide splendors robs the farthest skies. That she with love her hero may surprise. Her train she robes with liveries of heaven. To her are all the dazzling splendors given. The glittering court is filled with chiefs and seers. When Ishtar at the entrance now appears. The Nikali, 213 her heralds at the door. As some grand sovereign from a foreign shore. The goddess proudly enters with her train. The spirits of the earth, and tossing main. From mountains, rivers, woods, and running streams. And every spirit where the sunlight gleams. Now fill the courts and palaces and halls. And thousands glowing bright surround the walls. Each wafting wind brings Igegi 214 that soar. Above an Anasii from every shore. And herald Ishtar's presence, queen of love. With music through the halls, around, above. From lyres and lutes their softest wooings bring. As Ishtar bows before her lover king. A halo from the goddess fills the halls. And shines upon the dazzling jeweled walls. The Tsar and seers in wonder were amazed. At the sweet strains, and glorious light that blazed. Transfixed in silence stood, as she now spoke. And sweeter music through the palace woke. Like fragrant zephyrs, warbling from retreats. Of gardens of the gods, she thus entreats. From Isdabar her welcome, or a glance. Of love, and she the Tsar would thus entrance. Thy wisdom, Tsar, surpasses all mankind. In thee, O king. No blemish do I find. 
the Queen of Heaven favor seeks from thee. I come with love, and prostrate bend the knee. My follies past, I hope thou wilt forgive. Alone I love thee, with thee move and live. My heart's affections to thee, me have led. To woo thee to thine Ishtar's marriage bed. O oh, kiss me, my beloved. I adore. Thee. Hear me. I renounce the godly shore. With all its hollow splendor where as queen. I o'er the heavenly hosts, unrivaled reign. In grandest glory on my shining throne. And yet for thee my heart here pines alone. I cannot live without my Isdabar. My husband's love and simple word shall far. Surpass the godly bond. O oh, let me, King. Rest on thy breast, and happiness will cling. To all the blissful days which shall be thine. With glory of the skies, my love shall shine. O oh, Isdabar, my King. This love below. Is grander here than mortals e'er can know. For this I leave my throne in yonder skies. And at the feet of love thy queen now lies. Oh, let me taste with thee the sweets of love. And I my love for thee will grandly prove. And thou shalt ride upon a diamond car. Lined with pure gold, and jeweled horns of war. Shall stud it round like rays of Samus fire. Rich gifts whatever my lover shall desire. Thy word shall bring to thee, my Sardan new. Lo! All the wealth that gods above can view. I bring to thee with its exhaustless store. O, oh, come my love! Within the halls, where more than I have named is found, all, all is thine. O, oh, come with me within our halls divine. Amid the fragrant odors of the pines. And all shrubs and flowers, vines. Euphrates Ziri there shall sing for thee. And dance around thy feet with Zimuri 215. And kings and lords and princes I will bring. To bow to thee, beloved, glorious king. With tribute from the mountains and the plains. As offerings to thee. Thy flocks shall twins. Bring forth, and herds of fattened, low in kine. Shall fast increase upon the plains divine. Thy warrior steeds shall prance with flowing manes. Resistless with thy chariot on the plain. Vast spoils, thy beasts of burden far shall bear. Unrivaled then shall be my king of war. And victory o'er all, thine eyes shall view. And loud acclaims shall rend the bright Samu. Column 2. The king's answer and Ishtar's rage. Amazed the sovereign sat upon his throne. And while she wooed, his heart was turned to stone. In scorn replied. Rise Ishtar, heaven's high queen. Though all thy wealth, possessions I had seen. Now piled before me, all in gems and gold. Of all the wealth of heaven there heaped of old. I nakedness and famine would prefer. To all the wealth divine thou canst confer. What carest thou for earthly royalty? The cup of poison shall thy lovers see. Thou sawest me within a haunt away. From men. I lingered on that direful day. And took thee for a beauteous Zirimu 216. Or Zirae or a Zilit 2, 217. And thou didst cause to enter love divine. As Zikaranai, spirit of the wine. Thou didst deceive me with thine arts refined. And love escaped upon the passing wind. Then to my palace come, and me there seek. Didst place thy mouth upon my lips, and wake. Within my breast a dream of love and fire. Till I awoke and checked thy wild desire. Thou earnest with the form of spirits fair. Didst hover o'er me in my chamber there. Thy godly fragrance from the skies above. A sign did carry of the queen of love. I woke, and thou didst vanish, then didst stand. As mine own servant in my palace grand. Then as a skulking foe, a mystic spell. Didst weave, and scorch me with the fires of hell. While I was wrapped in sleep. Again I woke. I saw around me Dalkai, sulfurious smoke. 
which thou didst send around my royal bed. And I believe that I was with the dead. With Dalkai gloating over me in hell. My Sukuli then sought thy presence fell. Forever may thy wooing cease. For love. Hath fled, may godly praises never move. Upon the lips of holy gods, or men. Of thee, the god of love ne'er speak again. I loved thee once. With love my heart inflamed. Once sought thee, but my troubles I have blamed. Upon thee, for the dreams which thou didst send. Go. Rest thy heart, and to thy pleasures wend. For Tammuz of thy youth thy heart once wailed. For years his weary form thy love assailed. Alala next, the eagle, lovest, tore. His wings. No longer could he joyful soar. And float above the forest to the sky. Thou leavest him with fluttering wings to die. A lusty lion thou didst love, his might. Destroyed, and plucked his claws in fierce delight. By sevens plucked, nor heard his piteous cry. A glorious war steed next thy love didst try. Who yielded to thee, till his strength was gone. For seven cast but two hundred and eighteen thou didst ride upon. Him without ceasing, gave no food nor drink. Till he beneath thee to the earth did sink. And to his mistress. Silili, the steed. Returned with broken spirit, drooping head. Thou lovest Tabulu, the shepherd king. And from his love continuous didst ring. Semukeki, 219 till he to appease thy love. The mighty gods of heaven then sought to move. To pity with his daily offerings. Beneath thy wand upon the ground he springs. Transformed to a hyena, then was driven. From his own city by his dogs was riven. Next is Olan you lovest, uncouth, and rude. Thy father's laborer, who subject stood. To thee, and daily scoured thy vessels bright. His eyes from him were torn, before thy sight. And chained before thee, there thy lover stood. With deadly poison placed within his food. Thou saidst, O Isolanu, stretch thy hand. The food partake, that doth before thee stand. Then with thy hand didst offer him the food. He said, What askest thou? It is not good. I will not eat the poison thus prepared. Thy godly wand him from thy presence cleared. Transformed him to a pillar far away. And for my love Queen Ishtar comes this day. As thou hast done with others, would thy love. Return to me, thine actions all doth prove. The queen in fury from his presence turned. In speechless rage the palace halls she spurned. And proudly from the earth swept to the skies. Her godly train in terror quickly flies. Column 3 Ishtar complains to Anu, king of heaven, who creates a winged bull to destroy Ishtar. Before the throne of Arm, Ishtar cries. And Anatu, the sovereigns of the skies. O Sar! This king my beauty doth despise. My sweetest charms beholds not with his eyes. And anew to his daughter thus replied. My daughter, thou must crush his vaunting pride. And he will claim thy beauty and thy charms. And gladly lie within thy glorious arms. I hate him now, O Sar, as I did love. Against the strength of anew let him prove. His right divine to rule without our aid. Before the strength of and let him bleed. Upon this giant sar so filled with pride. Let Anu's winged bull two hundred and twenty in fury ride. And I will aid the beast to strike him prone. Till he in death shall breathe his dying groan. And in said, if thou to it shall join. Thy strength, which all thy noble names define. Thy glories two hundred and twenty-one and thy power thus magnified. Will humble him, who has thy power defied. And Ishtar thus, by all my might as queen. Of war and battles, where I proudly reign. This sar my hands shall strike upon the plain. And end his strength and all his boastings vain. By all the noble names with gods I hold. As queen of war, 
this giant monarch bold. Who o'er mine ancient city thinks to reign? Shall lie for birds of prey upon the plain. For answering my love for thee with scorn. Proud monarch. From thy throne thou shalt be torn. For Ishtar, anew from the clouds creates. A shining monster with thick brazen plates. And horns of adamant, two hundred and twenty-two and now it flies. Toward the palace, roaring from the skies. Column 4. The fight with the winged bull of Anu. The gods appear above to watch the fight. And Irekas Masari rush in a fright. To Isdabar, who sits upon his throne. Before him fall in speechless terror prone. A louder roar now echoes from the skies. And Irekas Sar without the palace flies. He sees the monster light upon the plain. And calls Hiabani with the choicest men. Of Irekas spears men armed, who fall in line. Without the gates, led by their Sar divine. And now the monster rushed on Isdabar. Who meets it as the god of chase and war. With whirling sword before the monster's face. He rains his blows upon its front of brass. And horns, and drives it from him o'er the plain. And now with spreading wings it comes again. With maddened fury, fierce its eyeballs glare. It rides upon the monarch's pointed spear. The scales the point have turned, and broke the haft. Then as a pouncing hawk when sailing daft. In swiftest flight o'er him drops from the skies. But from the gleaming sword it quickly flies. Three hundred warriors now nearer drew. To the fierce monster, which toward them flew. Into their midst the monster furious rushed. And through their solid ranks resistless pushed. To stay Hiabani, onward fought and broke. Two lines and through the third, which met the shock. With ringing swords upon his horns and scales. At last the seer it reaches, him impales. With its sharp horns, but valiant is the seer. He grasps its crest and fights without a fear. The monster from his sword now turns to fly. Hiabani grasps its tail, and turns his eye. Towards his king, while scudding o'er the plain. So quickly has it rushed and fled amain. That is the bar its fury could not meet. But after it be sprang with nimble feet. Hiabani loosed his grasp and stumbling falls. And to his king approaching, thus he calls. My friend, our strongest men are overthrown. But see. He comes. Such strength was never known. With all my might I held him, but he fled. We both it can destroy. Strike at its head. Like Rimen now he flies upon the air. As sceptered Nebo, two hundred and twenty-three he his horns doth bear. That flash with fire along the roaring skies. Two twenty-four around the Sar and Seer he furious flies. Hiabani grasps the plunging horns, nor breaks. His grasp, in vain the monster plunging shakes. His head, and roaring, upward furious rears. Hiabani's strength the mighty monster fears. He holds it in his iron grasp, and cries. Quick! Strike! Beneath the blows the monster dies. And Isdabar now turned his furious face. Toward the gods, and on the beast doth place. His foot, he raised his gory sword on high. And sent his shout defiant to the sky. Tis thus, ye foes divine. The Tsar proclaims. His war against your power, and highest names. Hurl. Hurl. Your darts of fire, ye vile KL by. 225. My challenge here. Ye cravens of the sky. Column V. The curse of Ishtar, and rejoicing of Erek over the victory. The monarch and his seer have cleft the head. From Anu's bull prone lying on the mead. They now command to bring it from the plain. Within the city where they view the slain. The heart they brought to Samus holy shrine. Before him laid the offering divine. Without the temple's doors the monster lays. And Ishtar o'er the towers the bulk surveys. She spurns the carcass, 
cursing thus, she cries. Woe! Woe to Isdabar, who me defies! My power has overthrown, my champion slain. Accursed Tsar! Most impious of men! Hiabani heard the cursing of the queen. And from the carcass cleft the tail in twain. Before her laid it. To the goddess said. And wherefore comest thou with naught to dread? Since I with Isdabar have conquered thee. Thou hearest me. Before thee also see. Thine armored champion scales. Thy beast is dead. And Ishtar from his presence furious fled. And to her maids the goddess loudly calls. Joy and seduction from the palace halls. And o'er her champion's death she mourning cries. And flying with her maids, sped to the skies. King Isdabar his summons sends afar. To view the monster slain by Eureka's sar. The young and old the carcass far surround. And view its mighty bulk upon the ground. The young men eye its horns with wild delight. And weigh them on the public scales in sight. Of Erek. Thirty Mene's ways, they cry. Of purest Zamet stone, seems to the eye. In substance, with extremities defaced. Six Guri weighed the monster's bulk undressed. As food for Lugal Turda, their Sar's god. The beast is severed, placed upon the wood. Piled high upon the altar o'er the fires. Then to Euphrates waters each retires. To cleanse themselves for Eureka's grand parade. As Isdabar by proclamation bade. Upon their steeds of war with Isdabar. The chiefs and warriors extend afar. With chariots, and waving banners, spears. And Erek rings with their triumphant cheers. Before the chariot of their great Ar. Who with his seer rides in his brazen car. The seers a proclamation loud proclaim. And cheer their sar and seer. And laud the name. Of their great monarch, chanting thus his praise. While Eureka's band their liveliest marches play. If anyone to glory can lay claim. Among all chiefs and warriors of fame. We Isdabar above them all proclaim. Our Isulbar 226 of undying fame. Sar Gabri la Isu. Sar Danu Biumas Lu. 227. He wears the diadem of Sabartu. From Bari Li 228 he came to Eridu. Our giant monarch, who of all Bari 229. Can rival him, our Ninarad Rabi. 230. Sar Danu Ina Madi Basi. Sar Biumasla I Muki, Nisi. 231. Through the grand halls of Erek far resounds. The feast their Sar proclaimed through all the grounds. Of Erekah's palaces. Where he now meets. His heroes, seers and counselors, and greets. Them in his crowded festal halls. Grand banquets far are spread within the walls. And sparkling rarest wines each freely drank. And revels ruled the hour till Samus sank. And shadows sweep across the joyous plain. And Samus sleeps with heat neath the main. The jeweled lamps are lit within the halls. And dazzling glory on the feasters falls. The rays o'er gems and richest garments shone. Upon the lords and ladies round the throne. While troops of dancing girls around them move. With cymbals, harps and lutes, with songs of love. Again the board glows with rich food and wines. Now spread before them till each man reclines. Upon his couch at rest in the far night. And swimming halls and wines pass from their sight. Column 6. Ishtar weaves a mystic spell over the king and seer. And vanishes the seer advises the king to seek the aid of the immortal seer who escapes from the flood. The goddess Ishtar wrapped in darkness waits. Until the goddess Tzilat 2 232 the gates. Of sleep has closed upon the darkened plain. Then lightly to the palace flies the queen. O'er the king's couch she weaves an awful dream. While her bright eyes upon him furious gleam. Then o'er Hiabani's couch a moment stands. 
and heaven's curtains pulls aside with hands. Of mystic power, and he a vision sees. The gods in council. Vanishing, she flees. Without the palace like a gleam of light. And wakes the guard around in wild affright. Next day the seer reveals to Isdabar. How all the gods a council held of war. And gave to a new power to punish them. For thus defying Ishtar's godly claim. And thus the seer gave him his counsel, well. Considered, how to meet their plottings fell. To Kasasadra go, who from the flood. Escaped when o'er the earth the waters stood. Above mankind, and covered all the ground. He at the river's mouth may yet be found. For his great aid, we now the seer must seek. For Anu's fury will upon us break. Immortal lives the seer beside the sea. Through Hades pass, and soon the seer mayst see. Thus Isdabar replied, and him embraced. With thee, Hiabani, I my throne have graced. With thee I go, mine own companion dear. And on the road each other we may cheer. The way is long, my king, and if I live. With thee I go, but oh, thou must not grieve. For perils great attend the way, and old. Am I, the suppleness of youth to hold. My strength I need, but it alas. Is gone. My heart is ready, but I fear, my son. These crippled limbs which a news bull hath left. Of my strong vigor have thy seer bereft. Too weak am I, for that long journey hard. To undertake, my presence would retard. Thee with these wounds. Nor strength have I to last. To guard my body in the mountain fast. But if thou wilt, my strength is thine, my king. To do thy will my aged form shall spring. With gladness, and all perils I'll defy. If need be, for thee will thy servant die. Hiabani, noble one. My chosen seer. I love thee, bid thy loyal heart good cheer. He steeds may take to ride through all the way. With easy journeys on the road each day. From perils I will guard thee, and defend. Tomorrow then we on our way will wend. Equipped for the long journey they appear. Next morn and leave, while Eureka's people cheer. Them on their way across the glowing plain. To perils dire they go to stress and pain. Tablet 6 Kalamai, Ishtar's descent to Hades her fearful reception. To Hades darkened land, whence none return. Queen Ishtar, sin's great daughter, now doth turn. Inclined her ear and listened through the void. That lay beneath of every path devoid. The home of darkness, of the underworld. Where God Irkela 233, from the heights was hurled. The land and road from whence is no return. Where light no entrance hath to that dark born. Where dust to dust returns, devouring clods. Where light dwells not in Silatus abodes. Where sable ravens hovering rule the air. O'er doors and bolts dust reignath with despair. Before the gates of gloom the queen now stands. And to the keeper Ishtar thus commands. O keeper of the waters. Open wide. Thy gate, that I through these dark walls may glide. But if thou openst not the gate for me. That I may enter, shattered thou shalt see. The doors and bolts before thee lying prone. And from the dust shall rise each skeleton. With fleshless jaws devour all men with thee. Till death shall triumph o'er mortality. The keeper to the princess Ishtar said. Withhold thy speech. Or all at's fury dread. To her I go to bid thee welcome here. To all at then the keeper doth appear. Thy sister Ishtar the dark waters seeks. The queen of heaven, thus all at's fury breaks. So like an herb uprooted comes this queen. To sting me as an ASP doth Ishtar mean. What can her presence bring to me but hate? Doth heaven's queen thus come infuriate? And Ishtar thus replies, The fount I seek. Where I with Tammuz, my first love, may speak. And drink its waters, as sweet nectar wines. 
Weep o'er my husband, who in death reclines. My loss as wife with handmaids I deplore. O'er my dear Tammuz let my teardrops pour. And all at said, Go. Keeper, open wide. The gates to her. She hath me once defied. Bewitch her as commanded by our laws. To her thus Hades opened wide its jaws. Within, O goddess. Kutha thee receives. Thus Hades' palace its first greeting gives. He seized her, and her crown aside was thrown. O oh why, thou keeper, dost thou seize my crown? Within, O oh goddess. All at thee receives. Tis thus to thee our queen her welcome gives. Within the next gate he her earrings takes. And goddess Ishtar now with fury shakes. Then why, thou slave, mine earrings take away? Thus entrance, goddess, all at bids this day. At the third gate her necklace next he takes. And now in fear before him Ishtar quakes. And wilt thou take from me my gems away? Thus entrance, goddess, all at bids this day. And thus he strips the goddess at each gate. Of ornaments upon her breast and feet. And arms, her bracelets, girdle from her waist. Her robe next took and flung the queen undressed. Within a cell of that dark solitude. At last, before Queen Ishtar Alat stood. When she had long remained within the walls. And Alat mocked her till Queen Ishtar falls. Humiliated on the floor in woe. Then turning wildly, cursed her ancient foe. Queen Alat furious to her servant cries. Go. Naintar. With disease strike blind her eyes. And strike her side. Her breast and head and feet. With foul disease her strike, within the gate. Column 2. Effect of Ishtar's imprisonment in Hades' love departs from the earth the earth's solemn dirge of woe. When Ishtar, queen of love, from earth had flown. With her love fled, and left all nature prone. From earth all peace with love then fled amain. In loneliness the bull stalked o'er the plain. And tossed his drooping crest toward the sky. In sadness lay upon the green to die. On the far kine looked weary and bereaved. And turned toward the gods, and wondering grieved. The troubled kine then gravely chewed their cud. And hungerless in the rich pastures stood. The ass his mate abandoned, fled away. And loveless wives then cursed the direful day. And loving husbands kissed their wives no more. And doves their cooing ceased, and separate sore. And love then died in. All the breasts of men. And strife supreme on earth was reveling then. The sexes of mankind their wars divide. And women hate all men, and them deride. And some demented hurl aside their gowns. And queens their robes discard and jeweled crowns. And rush upon the streets bereft of shame. Their forms expose, and all the gods defame. Alas! From earth the queen of love has gone. And lovers void their haunts with faces wan. And spurn from them the hateful thoughts of love. For love no longer reigns, all life to move. An awful thrill now speeds through Hades' doors. And shakes with horror all the dismal floors. A wail upon the breeze through space doth fly. And howling gales sweep madly through the sky. Through all the universe there speeds a pang. Of travail. Manu 2 234 appalled doth hang. Upon her blackened pinions in the air. And piteous from her path leads black despair. The queen in chains in Hades dying lies. And life with her, they cry, forever dies. Through misty glades and darkened depths of space. Tornadoes roar her fate to earth's sweet face. The direful tidings from far Hades pour. Upon her bosom with their saddest roar. Like moans of mighty powers in misery. They bring the tale with awful minstrelsy. And earth her mists wrapped round her face in woe. While icy pangs through all her breast deep flow. Her bosom sobbing wails a mighty moan. 
Alas! Forever my sweet queen hath flown. With shrieks of hurricane, and oceans groan. And sobbing of the winds through heights unknown. Through mountain gorges sweep her wails of woe. Through every land and seas, her sorrows flow. Oh, moan! Oh, moan! Dear mountains, lakes, and seas! Oh, weep with me dear plants, and flowers, and trees! Alas! My beauty fading now will die. Oh, weep, ye stars, for me in every sky. Oh, Samus, hide thy face. I am undone. Oh, weep with me you are you, 235 my precious son. Let all your notes of joy, my birds, be stilled. Your mother's heart with dread despair is filled. Come back, my flowerets, with your fragrant dews. Come, all my beauties, with your brightest hues. Come back, my plants and buds and yumling shoots. Within your mother's bosom hide your roots. Oh, children, children! Love hath fled away. Alas! That life I gave should see this day. Your queen lies dying in her awful woe. Oh, why should she from us to Hades go? Wide nature felt her woe, and ceased to spring. And withered buds their vigor lost, and fling. No more their fragrance to the lifeless air. The fruit trees died, or barren ceased to bear. The male plants kiss their female plants no more. And pollen on the winds no longer soar. To carry their caresses to the seed. Of waiting hearts that unavailing bleed. Until they fold their petals in despair. And dying, drop to earth, and wither there. The growing grain no longer fills its head. The fairest fields of corn lie blasted, dead. All nature morning dons her sad attire. And plants and trees with falling leaves expire. And Samus light and moon god soothing rays. Earth's love no more attracts, recurring days. Are shortened by a blackness deep profound. That rises higher as the days come round. At last their light flees from the darkened skies. The last faint gleam now passes, slowly dies. Upon a blasted world, dread darkness falls. O'er dying nature, crumbling cities' walls. Volcanoes' fires are now the only light. Where pale-faced men collect around in fright. With fearful cries the lurid air they rend. To all the gods their wild petitions send. Column 3. Hapsicle, the god of hope, and herald of the gods, flies from the earth and intercedes for the release of Ishtar, and he grants his prayer. O hope! Thou fleeting pleasure of the mind! Forever with us stay, our hearts to bind. We cling to thee till life has fled away. Our dearest phantom, ever with us stay. Without thee, we have naught but dread despair. The worst of all our torments with us here. Oh, come with thy soft pinions, o'er us shine. And we will worship thee, a god divine. The ignis fatuous of all our skies. That grandly leads us, vanishes and dies. And we are left to grope in darkness here. Without a ray of light our lives to cheer. Oh, stay. Sweet love's companion, ever stay. And let us hope with love upon our way. We reck not if a phantom thou hast been. And we repent that we have ever seen. Thy light on earth to lead us far astray. Forever stay. Or ever keep away. When Papsicle beheld in man's abodes. The change that spread o'er blasted, lifeless clods. And heard earth's wailing through the waning light. With vegetation passing out of sight. From the doomed world to heaven he quickly flies. While from the earth are rising fearful cries. To Samus' throne he speeds with flowing tears. And of the future dark he pours his fears. To Sin, the moon god, Papsukul now cries. O'er Ishtar's fate, who in black Hades lies. O'er earth's dire end, which with Queen Ishtar dies. To he he appeals with mournful cries. O he, our creator, God and king. 
Queen Ishtar now is lying prone. To earth, our godly queen again, O, oh, bring. I trust thy love, O oh Holy One. To all the gods who reign o'er us on high. I pray. Thus hope thine aid implores. Release our queen. To Hades quickly fly. Thy papsuko with faith adores. The bull hath left the lowing kind bereaved. And sulking dies in solitude. The ass hath fled away, his mate's bath grieved. And women are no more imbued. With love, and drive their husbands far away. And wives enjoy not their caress. All peace and love have gone from earth this day. And love on earth knows not its bliss. The females die through all the living world. Among all beasts, and men, and plants. All love from them on earth have madly hurled. For blissful love no more each pants. And Samus' light is turned away from earth. And left alone volcanoes fire. The land is filled with pestilence and dearth. All life on earth will soon expire. When he heard the solemn chant of hope. From his high throne he let his scepter drop. And cried, and thus, I rule o'er all mankind. For this, I gave them life, immortal mind. To earth's relief, my herald shall quick go. I hear thy prayer, and song of Ishtar's woe. Go. At Susun Amir, with thy bright head. With all thy light spring forth. And quickly speed. Towards the gates of Hades, turn thy face. And quickly fly for me through yonder space. Before thy presence may the seven gates. Of Hades open with their gloomy grates. May all at's face rejoice before thy sight. Her rage be soothed, her heart filled with delight. But conjure her by all the godly names. And fearless be towards the roaring streams. Incline thine ear, and seek the path there spread. Release Queen Ishtar. Raise her godly head. And sprinkle her with water from the stream. Her purify. A cup filled to the brim. Place to her lips that she may drink it all. The herald as a meteor doth fall. With blazing fire disparts the hanging gloom. Around the gates of that dark world of doom. Column 4. Release of Ishtar her attempts to bring to life Tammuz, her first lover. When Alat saw the flaming herald come. And his bright light dispelling all her gloom. She beat her breast. And at him furious foams. In rage, and stamping shakes all Hades' domes. Thus cursed the herald, at Susun Amir. Away! Thou herald! Or I'll chain thee here. In my dark vaults, and throw thee for thy food. The city's garbage, which has stagnant stood. With impure waters for thy daily drink. And lodge thee in my prison till you sink. From life impaled in yonder dismal room. Of torture. To thy fate so thou hast come. Thine offspring with starvation I will strike. At last obedient doth all at speak. Go, Namtar. And the iron palace strike. O'er Ashrim 236 adorned let the dawn break. And seat the spirits on their thrones of gold. Let Ishtar life's bright waters then behold. And drink her fill, and bring her then to me. From her imprisonment, I sent her free. And Namtar then goes through the palace walls. And flings the light through all the darkened halls. And places all the spirits on their thrones. Leads Ishtar to the waters near the cones. She drinks the sparkling water now with joy. Which all her form doth cleanse and purify. And he at the first gate her robe returns. And leads her through the second, where he turns. And gives her bracelets back. Thus at each door. Returns to her her girdle, gems, then o'er. Her queenly brow he placed her shining crown. With all her ornaments that were her own. She stands with pride before the seventh gate. And Namtar bows to her in solemn state. Thou hast no ransom to our queen here paid. For thy deliverance. 
yet thou hast said. Thy Tammuz thou didst seek within our walls. Turn back. And thou wilt find him in these halls. To bring him back to life the waters pour. Upon him, they thy Tammuz will restore. With robes thou mayst adorn him and a crown. Of jewels, and thy maid with thee alone. Shall give thee comfort and appease thy grief. Karimtu, Samka come to thy relief. Now Ishtar lifts her eyes within a room. Prepared for her, and sees her maidens come. Before a weird procession wrapped in palls. That soundless glide within and fills the halls. Before her now they place a sable beer. Beside the fount dash, and Ishtar, drawing near. Raised the white pall from Thomas's perfect form. The clay unconscious, had that mystic charm. Of beauty sleeping sweetly on his face. Of agony or sorrow left no trace. But, oh! That awful wound of death was there. With its deep mark, the wound, and not the scar. When Ishtar's eyes beheld it, all her grief. Broke forth afresh, refusing all relief. She smote her breast in woe, and moaning cried. Nor the bright waters to his wound applied. O Tammuz! Tammuz! Turn thine eyes on me. Thy queen thou didst adorn, before thee see. Behold the emeralds and diamond crown. Thou gavest me when I became thine own. Alas! He answers not, and must I mourn. Forever o'er my love within this bourne. But, oh! The waters from this glowing stream. Perhaps those eyes on me with love will beam. And I shall hear again his song of love. Oh, quickly let these waters to me prove. Their claim to banish death with magic power. Then with her maids, she o'er his form doth pour. The sparkling drops of life. He moves. He lives. What happiness is this my heart receives? O oh, come, my Tammuz! To my loving arms! And on breast his breathing form she warms. With wondering eyes he stares upon his queen. And nestling closed his eyes in bliss again. Column V. Tammuz is restored to life by the waters of life his song of love. The nectared cup the queen placed to his lips. And o'er his heaving breast the nectar drips. And now his arms are folded round his queen. And her fond kisses he returns again. And see. They bring to him his harp of gold. And from its strings, sweet music as of old. His skillful hands wake through the sounding domes. Oh, how his song of love wakes those dark rooms. My queen of love comes to my arms. Her faithful eyes have sought for me. My love comes to me with her charms. Let all the world now happy be. My queen has come again. Forever, dearest, let me rest. Upon the bosom of my queen. Thy lips of love are honeyed best. Come. Let us fly to bowering green. To our sweet bower again. O oh love on earth! O oh love in heaven! That dearest gift which gods have given! Through all my soul let it be driven! And make my heart its dearest haven! For love returns the kiss! O! Oh, let me pillow there within! Thy breast, and, O, oh, so sweetly rest! My life anew shall there begin! On thy sweet charms, O, oh, let me feast! Life knows no sweeter bliss. Oh, let me feast upon thy lips. As honeybird the nectar sips. And drink new rapture through my lips. As honeybee its head thus drips. In nectarine abyss. Oh love, sweet queen I my heart is thine. My life I clasp within mine arms. My fondest charmer, queen divine. My soul surrenders to thy charms. In bliss would fly away. No dearer joy than this I want. If love is banished from that life. There bodiless, my soul would pant. And pine away in hopeless grief. If love be fled away. If love should bide and fold her wings. 
In bowers of yonder gleaming skies. Unmeaning then each bard oft sings. Of bliss that lives on earth and dies. I want such love as this. I want thy form, thy loving breast. Mine arms of love surrounding thee. And on thy bosom sweetly rest. Or else that world were dead to me. No other life is bliss. If it is thus, my queen, I go. With joy to yonder blissful clime. But if not so, then let me flow. To soil and streams through changing time. To me would be more bliss. For then, in blooming flowerets, I. Could earth adorn, my soul delight. And never thus on earth could die. For though I should be hid from sight. Would spring again with joy. And sing as some sweet warbling bird. Or in the breezes wave as grain. As yellow sunbirds there have word. On earth, could I thus live again. That beauteous world enjoy. Mid safflower fields or waving cane. Or in the honeysuckles lie. In forms of life would breathe again. Enjoy earth's sweetest revelry. And ever spring again. Each life to me new joys would bring. In breast of beast or bird or flower. In each new form new joys would spring. And happy, ever, love would soar. Triumphant filled with joy. In jujube or tamarisk. Perhaps would come to life again. Or in the form of fawns would frisk. Mid violets upon the plain. But I should live again. And throb beneath the glistening dew. In bamboo tufts, or mango trees. In lotus bloom, and spring anew. In rose tree bud, or such as these. On earth return again. And I should learn to love my mate. In beast or singing bird or flower. For kiss of love in hope could wait. Perhaps I then would come that hour. In form I have again. And love you say, my queen, is there dash. Where I can breathe with life anew. But is it so? My love, beware. For some things oft are false, some true. But I thee trust again. We fly away. From gates away. Oh, life of bliss. Oh, breath of balm. With wings we tread the silver way. To trailing vines and feathery palm. To bower of love again. Column 6. Escape of Tammuz from Hades His death in the clouds Funeral procession of the gods Ishtar's elegy over the death of Tammuz His revival in Hades. Where he is crowned as the lord of Hades Ishtar's return brings light and love back to earth. But see. They pass from those dark gates and walls. And fly upon the breeze from Hades halls. Hark. Hark. The sounding harp is stilled. It falls. From Thomas's hands. Oh, how its wailing calls. To you bright ZNI 237 flying through the skies. See. One sweet spirit of the wind swift flies. And grasps the wailing harp before it ends. Its wail of woe, and now beneath it bends. With silent pinions listening to its strings. Wild sobbing on the winds. With wailing rings. The conscious harp, and trembles in her hands. A rush of pinions comes from myriad lands. With moaning sends afar the awful tale. And mourners brings with every whispering gale. And see. The queen's companion fainting sinks. She lays him on that cloud with fleecy brinks. And oh. His life is ebbing fast away. She wildly falls upon his breast, and gray. Her face becomes with bitter agony. She tearless kneels, wrapped in her misery. And now upon his breast she lays her head. With tears that gods, alas. With men must shed. She turning, sobs to her sweet waiting maids. Who weeping o'er her stand with bended heads. Assemble, oh, my maids, in mourning here. The gods. And spirits of the earth bring near. They come. They come. 
three hundred spirits high. The heavenly spirits come. The Ijijai. From heaven streams and mouths and plains and valleys. And gods by thousands on the wings of gales. The spirits of the earth, Anunnasiai. Now join around their sisters of the sky. Hark! Hear her weeping to the heavenly throng. Imploring them to chant their mournful song. With your gold lyres, the dirge, oh, sing with me. And moan with me, with your sweet melody. With swelling notes, as zephyrs softly wail. And cry with me as sobbing of the gale. O oh, earth! Dear earth! O, oh, wail with thy dead trees. With sounds of mountain torrents, moaning seas. And spirits of the lakes, and streams, and valleys. And Zikuri of mountains trackless trail. Join our bright legions with your queen. O, oh, weep. With your sad tears, dear spirits of the deep. Let all the mournful sounds of earth be heard. The breeze hath carried stored from beast and bird. Join the sweet notes of doves for their lost love. To the wild moans of ours, wailing move. Let choirs of heaven and of the earth then peal. All living beings my dread sorrow feel. Oh, come with saddest, weirdest melody. Join earth and sky in one sweet threnody. Ten thousand times ten thousand now in line. In all the panoplies of gods divine. A million crowns are shining in the light. A million scepters, robes of purest white. Ten thousand harps and lutes and golden lyres. Are waiting now to start the heavenly choirs. And lo! A chariot from heaven comes. While halves rise from yonder sapphire domes. A chariot encrusted with bright gems. A blaze of glory shines from diadems. See! In the car the queen o'er Thomas bends. And nearer the procession slowly wends. Her regal diadem with tears is dimmed. And her bright form by sorrow is redeemed. To sweeter, holier beauty in her woe. Her tears a halo form and brighter flow. Caparisoned with pearls, ten milk-white steeds. Are harnessed to her chariot that leads. On snow-white swans beside her ride her maids. They come. Through yonder silver cloudy glades. Behind her chariot ten sovereigns ride. Behind them comes all heaven's lofty pride. On pale white steeds, the chargers of the skies. The clouds of snowy pinions rustling rise. But hark! What is that strain of melody? That fills our souls with grandest euphony? Hear how it swells and dies upon the breeze. To softest whisper of the leaves of trees. Then sweeter, grander, nobler, sweeping comes. Like myriad lyres that peal through heaven's domes. But, oh! How sad and sweet the notes now come. Like music of the spheres that softly hum. It rises, falls, with measured melody. With saddest notes and mournful symphony. From all the universe sad notes repeat. With doleful strains of woe transcendent, sweet. Hush! Hear the song. My throbbing heart be still. The songs of gods above the heavens fill. Oh, weep with your sweet tears, and morning chant. O'er this dread loss of heaven's queen. With her, O oh sisters, join your sweetest plaint. O'er our dear Tammuz, Tammuz slain. Come, all ye spirits, with your drooping wings. No more to us sweet joy he brings. Ah, me, my brother. 238. Oh, weep. Oh, weep. Ye spirits of the air. Oh, weep. Oh, weep. Anunnasiai. Our own dear queen is filled with dread despair. Oh, pour your tears, dear earth and sky. Oh, weep with bitter tears, O oh dear Sidhu. Oh, her fearful deeds of Ninazu. Ah, me, my brother. Let joy be stilled. And every hope be dead. And tears alone our hearts distill. My love has gone. 
To darkness he has fled. Dread sorrow's cup for us, O, oh, fill. And weep for Tammuz we have held so dear. Sweet sisters of the earth and air. Ah, me, my sister. O, oh, come ye, dearest, dearest Zirinu. With grace and mercy help us bear. Our loss and hers, our weeping queen, O, oh, see. And drop with us a sister's tear. Before your eyes our brother slain. O, oh, view. O, oh, weep with us o'er him so true. Ah, me, his sister. The sky is dead, its beauty all is gone. O, oh, weep, ye clouds, for my dead love. Your queen in her dread sorrow now is prone. O oh, rocks and hills in tears, O, oh, move. And all my heavenly flowerets for me weep. O'er oh, him who now in death doth sleep. Ah, me, my Tammuz. O, oh, drop o'er him your fragrant dewy tears. For your own queen who brings you joy. For love, the queen of love, no longer cheers. Upon my heart it all doth cloy. Alas! I give you love, nor can receive. O, oh, all my children for me grieve. Ah, me, my Tammuz! Alas! Alas! My heart is dying dead. With all these bitter pangs of grief. Despair hath fallen on my queenly head. O, oh, is there, sisters, no relief? Hath Tammuz from me ever, ever, gone? My heart is dead, and turned to stone. Ah, me, his queen. My sister spirits, O oh my brothers dear. My sorrow strikes me to the earth. Oh, let me die. I now no fate can fear. My heart is left a fearful dearth. Alas, from me all joy. All joy. Hath gone. Oh, Ninazu, what hast thou done? Ah, me, his queen. To Hades' world beyond our sight they go. And leave upon the skies Margadis 239 glow. That shines eternally along the sky. The road where souls redeemed shall ever fly. Prince Tammuz now again to life restored. Is crowned in Hades as its king and lord 240. And Ishtar's sorrow thus appeased, she flies. To earth, and fills with light and love the skies. Tablet 7 Column I The king and seer conversing on their way to Casa Sadra interpretation of the king's dream in the palace on the night of the festival. The dream, my seer, which I beheld last night. Within our tent, may bring to us delight. I saw a mountain summit flash with fire. That like a royal robe or god's attire. Illumined all its sides. The omen might. Some joy us bring, for it was shining bright. And thus the Tsar revealed to him his dream. He Abani said, My friend, though it did seem. Propitious, yet, deceptive was it all. And came in memory of Elam's fall. The mountain burning was Kumbaba's halls. We fired, when all his soldiers from the walls. Had fled. The Enitok Gary, 241, on that morn. Of such deceptive dreams, I would thee warn. Some twenty Kaspu they have passed this day. At thirty Kaspu they dismount to pray. And raise an altar, Samus to beseech. That they their journey's end may safely reach. The tent now raised, their evening meal prepare. Beneath the forest in the open air. And Isdabar brought from the tent the dream. He dreamed the festal night when Ishtar came. To him. He reads it from a written scroll. Upon my sight a vision thus did fall. I saw two men that night beside a god. One man a turban wore, and fearless trod. The god reached forth his hand and struck him down. Like mountains hurled on fields of corn, thus prone. He lay, and Isdabar then saw the god. Was Anatu. 242 who struck him to the sod. The troubler of all men, Samu's fierce queen. Thus struck the turbaned man upon the plain. He ceased his struggling, to his friend thus said. My friend, thou askest not why I am laid. Here naked, 
nor my low condition heed. Accursed thus I lie upon the mead. The God has crushed me, burned my limbs with fire. The vision from mine eyes did then expire. A third dream came to me, which I yet fear. The first beyond my sight doth disappear. A fire God thundering o'er the earth doth ride. The door of darkness burning flew aside. Like a fierce stream of lightning, blazing fire. Beside me roared the God with fury dire. And hurled wide death on earth on every side. And quickly from my sight it thus did glide. And in its track I saw a palm tree green. Upon a waste, naught else by me was seen. He abani pondering, thus explained the dream. My friend, the God was Samus, who doth gleam. With his bright glory, power, our God and Lord. Our great Creator King, whose thunders roared. By thee, as through yon sky he takes his way. For his great favor we should ever pray. The man thou sawest lying on the plain. Was thee, O king, to fight such power is vain. Thus Anatu will strike thee with disease. Unless thou soon her anger shalt appease. And if thou warrest with such foes divine. The fires of death shall o'er thy kingdom shine. The palm tree green upon the desert left. Doth show that we of hope are not bereft. The gods for us their shares have surely weft, 243. One shall be taken, and the other left. Column 2. Contest with the dragons in the mountains the seer is mortally wounded his calm view of the hereafter. 244 inch O Mamitu, thou god of fate and death. Thou spirit of fierce hate and parting breath. Thou banisher of joy. O ghastly law. That gathers countless forces in thy maw. A phantom. Curse. And oft a blessing, joy. All heaven and earth thy hands shall e'er employ. With blessings come, or curses to us bring. The God who fails not with her hovering wing. Nor God, nor man thy coming e'er may ken. O mystery! Thy ways none can explain. If thou must come in earthquakes, fire, and flood. Or pestilence and eftsons cry for blood. Thou comest oft with voice of sweetest love. Our dearest, fondest passions, hopes, to move. And men have worshipped thee in every form. In fear have praised thee, sought thy feet to charm. We reek not if you blessings, curses bring. For men oft change thy noiseless, ghoulish wing. And yet, thou comest, goddess Mamitu. To bring with thee the feet of Ninazu. Two sister ghouls, remorseless, tearless, wan. We fear ye not, ye be you I do, 245 begone. Sweet life renews itself in holy love. Your victory is not. Ye vainly rove. Across our pathway with yours forms inane. For somewhere, though we die, we live again. 246 The soul departed shall in glory shine. As burnished gold its form shall glow divine. And Samus there shall grant to us new life. And Meridak, the eldest son, all strife. Shall end in peace in yonder blessed abode. Where happiness doth crown our glorious God. 247 The sacred waters there shall ever flow. To Anat's arms shall all the righteous go. The queen of Anu, heaven's king, our hands. Outstretched will clasp, and through the glorious lands. Will lead us to the place of sweet delights. The land that glows on yonder blessed heights. Where milk and honey from bright fountains flow. And nectar to our lips, all sorrows, woe. Shall end in happiness beside the stream. Of life, and joy for us shall ever gleam. Our hearts with thankfulness shall sweetly sing. And grander blissfulness each day will bring. And if we do not reach that spirit realm. Where bodiless each soul may ages whelm. With joy unutterable, still we live. With bodies new upon dear earth, and give. Our newer life to children with our blood. Or if these blessings we should miss. In wood. Or glen, or garden. 
field, or emerald seas. Our forms shall spring again, in such as these. We see around us throbbing with sweet life. In trees or flowerets. This needs no belief. On which to base the fabric of a dream. For earth her children from death doth redeem. And each contributes to continuous bloom. So go your way. Ye sisters, to your gloom. Far on their road have come the king of fame. And seer, within the land of Moss 248 they came. Nor knew that fate was hovering o'er their way. In gentle converse they have passed the day. Some twenty caspu o'er the hills and plain. They a wild forest in the mountain gain. In a deep gorge they rode through thickets wild. Beneath the pines, now to a pass they filed. And lo! Two dragons two hundred and forty-nine near a cave contend. Their path. With backs upreared their coils unbend. Extend their ravenous jaws with a loud roar. That harshly comes from mouths of clotted gore. The sky o'erhead with lowering clouds is cast. Which anew in his rage above them mast. Dark tempests fly above from Rimmon's breath. Who hovers o'er them with the gods of death. The wicked seven winds howl wildly round. And crashing cedars falling shake the ground. Now Tzillatu her black wings spreads o'er all. Dark shrouding all the forest with her pall. And from his steed for safety each dismounts. And o'er their heads now break the ebon founts. But hark! What is that dreadful roaring noise? The dragons come. Their flaming crests they poise. Above, and nearer blaze their eyes of fire. And see! Upon them rush the monsters dire. The largest springs upon the giant Tsar. Who parrying with the sword he used in war. With many wounds it pierces, drives it back. Again it comes, renews its fierce attack. With fangs outspread its victims to devour. High o'er the monarch's head its crest doth tower. Its fiery breath upon his helm doth glow. Exposed its breast. He strikes. His blade drives through. Its vitals. Dying now it shakes the ground. And furious lashes all the forest round. But hark! What is that awful lingering shriek? And cries of woe, that on his ears wild break. A blinding flash, see. All the land reveals. With dreadful roars, and darkness quick conceals. The fearful sight, to ever after come. Before his eyes, wherever he may roam. The king, alas. Too late he a bonny drags. From the beast's fangs, that dies beneath the crags. Or hanging near the cave. And now a din. Loud comes from Dalki that around them spin. In fierce delight, while hellish voices rise. In harsh and awful mockery. The cries. Of agony return with taunting groans. And mock with their fell hate those piteous moans. Amazed stands Isdabar above his seer. Nor hears the screams, nor the fierce Dalki's jeer. Beneath the flashing lightnings he soon found. The cave, and lays the seer upon the ground. His breaking heart now cries in agony. Hiabani. O oh my seer, thou must not die. Alas! Dread Mamitu hath led us here. Awake for me. Arouse. My noble seer. I would to gods of Erech I had died. For thee. My seer. My strength. My kingdom's pride. The seer at last revives and turns his face. With love that death touched not, his hand doth place. With friendly clasp in that of his dear king. And says. Grieve not, beloved friend, this thing. Called death at last must come. Why should we fear? Tis Hades mist that opens for thy seer. The gods us brought, nor asked consent, and life. They give and take away from all this strife. That must be here, my life I end on earth. 
both joy and sorrow I have seen from birth. To Hades' awful land, whence none return. Hiabani's face in sorrow now must turn. My love for thee, mine only pang reveals. For this alone I grieve. A teardrop steals. Across his features, shining neath the light. The king has lit to make the cavern bright. But oh, friend Isdabar, my king, when I. From this dear earth to waiting Hades fly. Grieve not. And when to Erech you return. Thou shalt in glory reign, and Zai to learn. As thy companion all that thine own heart. Desires, thy throne thou wilt to him impart. The female, Samka, whom he brought to me. Is false, in league with thine own enemy. And she will cause thee mischief, seek to drive. Thee from thy throne, but do not let her live. Within the walls of Erech, for the gods. Have not been worshipped in their high abodes. When thou returnest, to the temple go. And pray the gods to turn from thee the blow. Of Anu's fury, the strong god, who reigns. Above, and sent these woes upon the plains. His anger raised against thee, even thee. Must be allayed, or thy goods thou shalt see. And kingdom, all destroyed by his dread power. But Kasasadra will to thee give more. Advice when thou shalt meet the ancient seer. For from thy side must I soon disappear. The seer now ceased, and on his couch asleep. Spoke not, and Isdabar alone doth weep. And thus twelve days were passed, and now the seer. Of the great change he saw was drawing near. Informed his king, who read to him the prayers. And for the end each friendly act prepares. Then said, O oh my Hiabani, dearest friend. I would that I thy body could defend. From thy fierce foe that brings the end to thee. My friend in battle I may never see. Again, when thou didst nobly stand beside. Me, with my seer and friend I then defied. All foes, and must thou leave thy friend, my seer. Alas! My king, I soon shall leave thee here. Column 3 Hiabani reveals two wonderful visions to the king, one of death and oblivion, and the other of heaven, and dies in the arms of the king. But, O, oh, my king! To thee I now reveal. A secret that my heart would yet conceal. To thee, my friend, two visions I reveal. The first I oft have dreamed beneath some spell. Of night, when I enwrapped from all the world. With self alone communed. Unconscious hurled. By winged thought beyond this present life. I seeming woke in a dark world where rife. Was nothingness a dark sun mist it seemed. All eek was not, no light for me there gleamed. And floating lone, which way I turned, saw not. Nor felt of substance neath my feet, nor fraught. With light was space around, nor cheerful ray. Of single star. The sun was quenched, or day. Or night, knew not. No hands had I, nor feet. Nor head, nor body, all was void. No heat. Or cold I felt, no form could feel or see. And not I knew but conscious entity. No boundary my being felt, or had. And speechless, deaf, and blind, and formless, sad. I floated through dark space a conscious blank. No breath of air my spirit moved. I sank. I knew not where, till motionless I ceased. At last to move, and yet I could not rest. Around me spread the limitless, and vast. My cheerless, conscious spirit fixed and fast. In some lone spot in space was moveless, stark. An atom chained by forces stern and dark. With naught around me. Comfortless I lived. In my dread loneliness. Oh, how I grieved. And thus, man's fate in life and death is solved. With naught but consciousness, and thus involved. All men in hopes that no fruition have. And this alone was all that death me gave. That all had vanished, gone from me that life. 
could give, and left me but a blank, with strife. Of rising thoughts, and vain regrets, to float. Away from life and light, be chained remote. Oh, how my spirit longed for some lone crag. To part the gloom beneath, and rudely drag. My sense is back. Or with its shock to end. My dire existence, to oblivion send. Me quickly. How I strove to curse, and break. That soundless void, with shrieks or cries, to wake. That awful silence which around me spread. In vain. In vain. All but my soul was dead. And then my spirit soundless cried within. Oh, take me. Take me back to earth again. For tortures of the flesh were bliss and joy. To such existence. Pain can never cloy. The smallest thrill of earthly happiness. Twas joy to live on earth in pain. I'll bless. Thee, gods, if I may see its fields I've trod. To kiss its fragrant flowers, and clasp the sod. Of Mother Earth, that grand and beauteous world. From all its happiness, alas. Was hurled. My spirit, then in frenzy I awoke. Great bell. A dream it was. As vanished smoke. It sped. And I sprang from my couch and prayed. To all the gods, and thus my soul allayed. And then with blessings on my lips, I sought. My couch, and dropped away in blissful thought. In dream the second. Then the silver sky. Came to me. Near the stream of life I lie. My couch the rarest flowers. And music thrills. My soul. How soft and sweet it sounds from rills. And streams, and feathered songsters in the trees. Of heaven's fruits, e'en all that here doth please. The heart of man was there. In a dear spot. I lay, mid olives, spices, where was wrought. A beauteous grotto, and beside me near. Were friends I loved, and one both near and dear. With me reclined, in blissful converse, sweet. With tender thoughts. Our joy was low, complete. The ministering spirits there had spread. Before us all a banquet on the mead. With heaven's food and nectar for our feast. And oh, so happy. How our joy increased. As moments flew, to years without an end. To courts refulgent there we oft did wend. Beside a silver lake, a holy fane. There stood within the center of the plain. High built on terraces, with walls of gold. Where palaces and mansions there unfold. A temple of the gods, that stands within. Mid feathery palms and jestin. Two hundred and fifty bowers green. The city rises to a dizzy height. With jeweled turrets flashing in the light. Grand mansions piled on mansions rising high. Until the glowing summits reach the sky. A cloud of myriad wings, air fills the sky. As doves around their nests on earth here fly. The countless millions of the souls on earth. The gods have brought to light from mortal birth. Are carried there from the dark world of doom. For countless numbers more there still is room. Through trailing vines my love and I oft wind. With arms of love around each other twined. This day, we passed along the stream of life. Through blooming gardens, with sweet odors rife. Beneath the ever-ripening fruits we walk. Along dear paths, and sweetly sing, or talk. While warbling birds around us fly in view. From bloom to bloom with wings of every hue. And large-eyed deer, no longer wild, us pass. With young gazelles, and kiss each other's face. We now have reached the stately stairs of gold. The city of the gods, here built of old. The pearled pillars rise and laid divine. With lotus delicately traced with vine. In gold and diamonds, pearls, and unknown gems. That wind to capital with blooming stems. Of lilies, honeysuckles, and the rose. 
an avenue of columns in long rows. A varied splendor, leads to shining courts. Where skillful spirit hands with perfect arts. Have chiseled glorious forms magnificent. With ornate skill and sweet embellishment. Their golden sculpture view on every hand. Or carved images in pearl that stand. In clusters on the floor, or in long rows. And on the walls of purest pearl there glows. The painting of each act of kindest deed. Each soul performs on earth. Is there portrayed. The scenes of tenderness and holy love. There stand and never end, but onward move. And fill the galleries of heaven with joy. And ever spirit artist hands employ. The holiest deeds are carved in purest gold. Or richest gems, and there are stored of old. Within the inner court a fountain stood. Of purest diamond molded, whence there flowed. Into a golden chalice, trickling cool. The nectar of the gods, a sparkling pool. That murmuring sank beneath an emerald vase. That rested underneath. The fountain's base. We entered then an arcade arching long. Through saffron galleries, and heard the song. That swelling came from temples highland. And passed through lazite courts and halls divine. While dazzling glories brighter round us shone. How sweet then came the strains. With grander tone. And, oh, my king. I reached the gates of pearl. That stood ajar, and heard the joyous whirl. That thrilled the sounding domes and lofty halls. And echoed from the shining jasper walls. I stood within the gate, and, oh, my friend. Before that holy sight I prone did bend. And hid my face upon the jacinth stairs. A shining God raised me, and bade my fears. Be flown, and I beheld the glorious throne. Of crystal light. With rays by man unknown. The awful God there sat with brows sublime. With robes of woven gold, and diadem. That beamed with blazing splendor o'er his head. I thus beheld the God with presence dread. The King of Kings, the Ancient of the Days. While music rose around with joyous praise. With awful thunders how they all rejoice. And sing aloud with one commingled voice. What happiness it was to me, my King. From bower to temple I went off to sing. Or spread my wings above the Mount Divine. And viewed the fields from height cerulean. Those songs still linger on dear memory's ear. And tireless rest upon me, ever cheer. But from the happy fields, alas. I woke. And from my sight the heavenly vision broke. But, oh, my king, it all was but a dream. I hope the truth is such, as it did seem. If it is true that such a heavenly land. Exists with happiness so glorious, grand. Within that haven I would happy be. But it, alas, is now denied to me. For, oh, my king, to Hades I must go. My wings unfold to fly to realms of woe. In darkness to that other world unknown. Alas! From joyous earth my life has flown. Farewell, my king, my love thou knowest well. I go the road. In Hades soon shall dwell. To dwelling of the god Urkala fierce. To walls where light for me can never pierce. The road from which no soul may e'er return. Where dust shall wrap me round, my body earn. Where sateless ravens float upon the air. Where light is never seen. Or enters there. Where I in darkness shall be crowned with gloom. With crowned heads of earth who there shall come. To reign with Anu's favor or great bells. Then scepterless are chained in their dark cells. With naught to drink but Hades waters there. And dream of all the past with blank despair. Within that world, I too shall ceaseless moan. Where dwell the Lord and the unconquered one. And seers and great men dwell within that deep. With dragons of those realms we all shall sleep. Where King Edna 251 and God Nit doth reign.
with all at, the dark underworld's great queen, who reigns o'er all within her regions lone, the mistress of the fields, her mother, prone, before her falls, and none her face withstands, but I will her approach, and take her hands, and she will comfort me in my dread woe. Alas! Through yonder void I now must go. My hands I spread. As birds with wings I fly. Descend. Descend. Beneath that awful sky. The seer falls in the arms of Isdabar. And he is gone, tis clay remaineth here. Column 4. The grief of the king over the loss of his seer, and his prayer to the moon god, who answers his prayer with a vision. The king weeps bitterly with flowing tears. Above his seer when from him disappears. The last faint breath. And then in deepest woe. He cries, and through that desert must I go. He abani, thou to me wast like the gods. Oh, how I loved thee. Must thou turn to clods. Through that dread desert must I ride alone. And leave thee here, he abani, lying prone. Alas, I leave thee in this awful place. To find our Kasasadra, seek his face. The son of Yubratutu, the seer. Oh, how can I, my friend, thus leave thee here? This night through those dark mountains I must go. I can no longer bear this awful woe. If I shall tarry here, I cannot sleep. O oh sin, bright moon god, of yon awful deep. I pray to thee upon my face, O, oh, hear. My prayer. My supplications bring thou near. To all the gods. Grant thou to me, e'en me. A heart of strength and will to worship thee. O, oh, is this death like that the seer hath dreamed? Perhaps the truth then on his spirit gleamed. If land of silver sky is but a myth. The other dream is true. E'en all he saith. O, oh, tell me, all ye sparkling stars. That wing above thy glorious flight. And feel not nature's jars. But grandly, sweetly fling thy light. To our bright world beneath serene. Hath mortals on thee known. Or viewed beyond that great unseen. Their future fate by gods been shown. O, oh, hear me, all ye gods on high. To gods who love mankind I pray. Despairing, O, oh, I cry. O, oh, drive these doubts and fears away. And yet and yet, what truths have we? O oh, wondrous mortal, must thou die? Beyond this end thou canst not see. O oh, life! O oh, death! O oh, mystery! The body still is here, with feeling dead. And sight is gone, and hearing from his dead. Nor taste, nor smell, nor warmth, nor breath of life. Where is my seer? Perhaps, his spirit rife. E'en now in nothingness doth wander lone. In agony his thoughts. With spirit prone. In dread despair, if conscious then, O gods. He spake the truth, his body to the clods. Hath turned. By this we feel, or hear, or see. And when, tis gone, exist, in agony. To Hades hath he gone. As he hath thought. Alas, the thought is torture, where have wrought. The gods their fearful curse. Ah, let me think. The silver sky. Alas, its shining brink. He hath not crossed. The wrathful gods deny. Him entrance. Where, oh, where do spirits fly? Whom gods have cursed. Alas, he is condemned. To wander lone in that dark world, contemned. And from the light of happy fields is barred. Oh, why do gods thus send a fate so hard? And cruel. Oh dear moon god, moon god sin. My seer hath erred. Receive his soul within. To joys prepared for gods and men. Though seer. He was, he immortality did fear as some unknown awakening in space. Oh, turn upon him thy bright blessed face. 
He was my friend. O moon god, hear my prayer. Imploring thee, doth pray thine Isdabar. And lo! A vision breaks before his eyes. The moon god hides the shadows of the skies. And sweeps above with his soft, soothing light. That streams around his face, he drives the night. Before his rays, and with his hands sweet peace. He spreads through all the skies, and strife doth cease. A girdle spans the heavens with pure light. That shines around the river of the night. Within the circling rays a host appears. The singers of the skies, as blazing spheres. Hark! Hear their harps and lyres that sweetly sound. They sing. Oh, how the glowing skies resound. O King of light and joy and peace. Supreme thy love shall ever reign. Oh, can our songs of bliss here cease? Our souls for joy cannot restrain. Sweep. Sweep thy lyres again. The former things 252, are passed away. Which we on earth once knew below. And in this bright eternal day. We happiness alone can know. Where bliss doth ever flow. Column V. The king buries his seer in the cave, and continuing his journey, he meets two fiery giants who guide the sun in the heavens they make merry over the king, and direct him on his way. The king within the cave his seer entombs. And mourning sadly from the cavern comes. The entrance closes with the rocks around. Again upon his journey he is bound. But soon within the mountains he is lost. Within the darkness as some vessel tossed. Upon the trackless waves of unknown seas. But further from the awful cavern flees. The morning breaks o'er crags and lonely glens. And he dismayed, the awful wild now scans. He reins his steed and wondering looks around. And sees of every side a mystic ground. Before him stands the peak of Mount Masu, 253. The cliffs and crags forlorn his eyes swift view. And cedars, pines, among the rocks amassed. That weirdly rise within the mountain fast. Hark! Hear that dreadful roaring all around. What nameless horror thrills the shaking ground. The king in terror stares. And see! His steed. Springs back. Wild snorting trembling in his dread. Behold! Behold those forms there blazing bright. Fierce flying by the earth with lurid light. Two awful spirits, demons, or fierce gods. With roaring thunders spring from their abodes. From depths beneath the earth the monsters fly. And upward lift their awful bodies high. Yet higher, higher. Till their crests are crowned. By heaven's gates. Thus reaching from the ground. To heights empyrean, while downward falls. Each form, extending far, neath Hades' walls. And see. Each god as molten metal gleams. While sulfurous flame from hell each monster climbs. Two fiery horrors reaching to the skies. While wrathful lightning from each monster flies. Hell's gate they guard with death's remorseless face. And hurl the sun around the realms of space. E'en swifter than the lightning, while it goes. Along its orbit, guided by their blows. Dire tempests rise above from their dread blows. And ever round a starry whirlwind glows. The countless stars thus driven whirl around. With all the circling planets circling round. The king astounded lifts his staring eyes. Into his face gray fear, with terror flies. As they approach, his thoughts the king collects. Thus over him one of the gods reflects. Who cometh yonder with the form of gods? The second says, he comes from man's abodes. But with a mortal's feebleness he walks. Behold upon the ground alone he stalks. One lifts his mighty arm across the sky. And strikes the sun as it goes roaring by. The fiery world with whiter heat now glows. While a vast flood of flame behind it flows. That curling, forms bright comets, meteors. 
and planets multiplies, and blazing stars. The robe of flame spreads vast across the sky, adorned with starry gems that sparkling fly, upon the ambient ether forming suns, that through new orbits sing their orisons. Their pealing thunders rend the trembling sky, the endless anthem of eternity. The monster turning to the king then says, When nearer now his awful form doth blaze. So thus you see, my son, the gods are strong. And to provoke great power, is foolish, wrong. But whither goest thou, thou sad-eyed king? What message hast thou? To us here would bring. The king now prostrate to the monsters prayed. Ye gods or demons, I within your glade of horrors, have unwilling come to seek. Our Kasasadra, who a spell can make. To turn the anger of the gods away. Immortal lives the seer beside the sea. He knoweth death and life, all secret things. And this alone your servant to you brings. The goddess sought my hand, which I denied. And Anu's fury thus I have defied. This all my troubles caused, show me the way. To Kasasadra, this I ask and pray. The god's vast face broke out with wondrous smiles. And laughing, ripples rolled along for miles. His mouth wide opened its abyss and yawned. As earthquake gulf, far spreading through the ground. His roaring laughter shakes the earth around. Ho! Ho! My son! So you at last have found. The queen can hate, as well as love her friends. And on thy journey Ishtar's love thee sends. A mortal wise thou wast, to her refuse. For she can do with man what she may choose. A mortal's love, in truth, is wondrous strong. A glorious thing it is, life's ceaseless song. Within a cave upon the mountain side. Thou there thy footsteps must to Hades guide. Twelve Kaspu go to yonder mountain gates. A heart like thine may well defy the fates. A darkness deep profound doth ever spread. Within those regions black, home of the dead. Go, Isdabar. Within this land of moss. Thy road doth lead, and to the west 254 doth pass. And may the maidens sitting by the walls. Refresh thee, lead thee to the happy halls. The path they take behind the rising sun. The setting sun they pass, with wings have flown. The scorpion men, two hundred and fifty-five within wide space have gone. Thus from his sight the monsters far have flown. Column 6. Isdabar enters Hades the song of the Dalki in the cavern of horrors the king passes through Hades to the garden of the gods, and sees the wonderful fountain of life's waters. In a weird passage to the underworld. Where demon shades sit with their pinions furled. Along the cavern's walls with poisonous breath. In rows here mark the labyrinths of death. The king with torch appraised, the pathway finds. Along the way of mortal souls he wins. Where shade sepulchral, soundless rise amid. Dark gulfs that yawn. And in the blackness hide. Their depths beneath the waves of gloomy lakes. And streams that sleep beneath the sulfurous flakes. That drift o'er waters bottomless, and chasms. Where moveless depths receive life's dying spasms. Here silence sits supreme on a drear throne. Of ebon hue, and joyless reigns alone. O'er a wide waste of blackness, solitude. Black, at her feet, there sleeps the awful flood. Of mystery which grasps all mortal souls. Where grisly horrors sit with crests of ghouls and hateless welcome with their eyes of fire. Each soul, remorseless lead to terrors dire, and ever, ever crown the god of fate. And there, upon her ebon throne she sate, the awful fiend, dark goddess Mamitu, who reigns through all these realms of Laatsu.256. But hark! What are these sounds within the gloom? And see! Long lines of torches nearer come. And now within a recess they have gone. The king must pass their door. 
perhaps someone of them may see him. Turn the hags of gloom upon him, as he goes by yonder room. He nearer comes, and peers within, and see. A greenish glare fills all the cave. And he beholds a blaze beneath a cauldron there. Coiled, yonder lie the dragons of despair. And lo! From every recess springs a form of shapeless horror. Now with dread alarm, he sees the flitting forms wild whirling there. And awful wailings come of wild despair. But hark! The Dalkai's song rings on the air. With groans and cries they shriek their mad despair. Oh, fling on earth, ye demons dark! Your madness, hate, and fell despair! And fling your darts at each we mark! That we may welcome victims here! Then sing your song of hate, ye fiends! And hurl your pestilential breath! Till every soul before us bends! And worship here the God of death! In error still for error and I! They see not, hear not many things! The unseen forces do not weigh. And each an unknown mystery brings. In error still for error and I. They delve for phantom shapes that ride. Across their minds alone and they. But mock the folly of man's pride. In error still for error and I. They learn but little all their lives. And wisdom ever wings her way. Evading ever while man strives. But hark! Another song rings through the gloom. And, oh, how sweet the music far doth come. Oh, hear it, all ye souls in your despair. For joy it brings to sorrowing ones e'en here. There is a deep unknown beyond. That all things hidden well doth weigh. On man's blind vision rests the bond. Of error still for error and I. But to the mighty gods, oh, turn for truth to lead you on your way. And wisdom from their tablets learn. And ever hope for error and I. And see. The hags disperse within the gloom. As those sweet sounds resound within the room. And now a glorious light doth shine around. Their rays of peace glide o'er the gloomy ground. And lo! Tis Papsical, our god of hope. With cheerful face comes down the fearful slope of rugged crags, and blithely strides to where our hero stands amid the poisonous air and says, Behold, my king, that glorious light that shines beyond, and I know more this sight of dreariness that only brings despair, for fantasy of madness reigneth here. The king in wonder carefully now eyes. The messenger divine with great surprise. And says. But why, thou god of hope, do I. Thus find thee in these realms of agony. This world around me banishes thy feet. From paths that welcome here the god of fate. And blank despair, and loss irreparable. Why comest thou to woe immeasurable? You err, my king, for hope oft rules despair. I oft times come to reign with darkness here. When I am gone, the God of fate doth reign. When I return, I soothe these souls again. So thus you visit all these realms of woe. To torture them with hopes they ne'er can know. Avaunt! If this thy mission is on earth. Or hell, thou leavest after thee but dearth. Not so, my king. Behold yon glorious sphere. Where gods at last take all these souls from here. Adieu. Thou soon shalt see the world of light. Where joy alone these souls will e'er delight. The god now vanishes away from sight. The hero turns his face toward the light. Nine caspa walks, till weird the rays now gleam. As Zimuri behind the shadows stream. He sees beyond, umbrageous grots and caves. Where odorous plants entwine their glistening leaves. And lo! The trees bright flashing gems here bear. And trailing vines and flowers do now appear. That spread before his eyes a welcome sight. 
like a sweet dream of some mild summer night. But, oh! His path leads o'er that awful stream. Across a dizzy arch mid sulfurous steam. That covers all the grimy bridge with slime. He stands perplexed beside the water's grime. Which sluggish move adown the limbo black. With murky waves that writhe demoniac. As ebon serpents curling through the gloom. And burl their inky crests, that silent come. Toward the yawning gulf. A tide of hate. And sweep their dingy waters to realms of fate. He cautious climbs the slippery walls of gloom. And dares not look beneath, lest fate should come. He enters now the stifling clouds that creep. Around the causeway, while its shadows sleep. Upon the stream that sullen moves below. He slips, and drops his torch. It far doth glow. Beneath him on the rocks. Alas, in vain. He seeks a path to bring it back again. It moves. Snatched by a Dalku's hand it flies. Away within the gloom, then falling dies. Within those waters black with a loud hiss. That breaks the silence of that dread abyss. He turns again, amid the darkness gropes. And careful climbs the cragged, slimy slopes. And now he sees, oh, joy. The light beyond. He springs. He flies along the glowing ground. And joyous dashes through the waving green. That lustrous meets his sight with rays serene. Where trees pure amber from their trunks distill. Where sweet perfumes the groves and arbors fill. Where zephyrs murmur odors from the trees. And sweep across the flowers, carrying bees. With honey laden for their nectar store. Where humming sunbirds upward flitting soar. O'er groves that bear rich jewels as their fruit. That sparkling tingle from each youngling shoot. And fill the garden with a glorious blaze. Of chastened light and tender thrilling rays. He glides through that enchanted mystic world. O'er streams with beds of gold that sweetly twirled. With woven splendor neath the blaze of gems. That crown each tree with glistening diadems. The sounds of streams are weft with breezes, chant. Their arias with trembling leaves, the haunt. Of gods. Oh how the tinkling chorus rings. With rhythms of the unseen rustling wings. Of souls that hover here where joy redeems. Them with a happiness that ever gleams. The hero stands upon a damasked bed. Of flowers that glow beneath his welcome tread. And softly sink with luring odors round. And beckon him to them upon the ground. Amid rare pinks and violets he lies. And one sweet pink low bending near, he eyes. With tender petals thrilling on its stem. It lifts its fragrant face and says to him. Dear king, wilt thou love me as I do thee? We love mankind, and when a mortal see. We give our fragrance to them with our love. Their love for us our inmost heart doth move. The king leans down his head, it kissing, says. Sweet beauty, I love thee. With thy sweet face. My heart is filled with love for all thy kind. I would that every heart thy love should find. The fragrant flower it thrills with tenderness. With richer fragrance answers his caress. He kisses it again and lifts his eyes. And rises from the ground with glad surprise. And see. The glorious spirits clustering round. They welcome him with sweet melodious sound. We hear their golden instruments of praise. As they around him whirl a threading maze. In great delight he views their beckoning arms. And lustrous eyes, and perfect, moving forms. And see. He seizes one bright, charming girl. As the enchanting ring doth nearer whirl. He grasps her in his arms, and she doth yield. The treasure of her lips, where sweets distilled. Give him a joy without a taint of guilt. It thrills his heartstrings till his soul doth melt. A kiss of chastity, and love, and fire. A joy that few can dare to hear aspire. 
The beauteous spirit has her joy, and flees. With all her sister spirits, neath the trees. And lo! The jest in 257 shining stands. With crystal branches in the golden sands. In this immortal garden stands the tree. With trunk of gold, and beautiful to see. Beside a sacred fount the tree is placed. With emeralds and unknown gems is graced. Thus stands, the Prince of Emeralds, 258 Elam's tree. As once it stood, gave immortality. To man, and bearing fruit, their sacred grew. Till heaven claimed again fair Eridu. 259. The hero now the wondrous fountain eyes. Its barrel base to ruby stem doth rise. To emerald and sapphire bands that glow. Where the bright curvings graceful outward flow. Around the fountain to its widest part. The wondrous lazite bands now curling start. And mingle with bright amethyst that glows. To a broad diamond band contracting grows. To UK and I stone, turquoise, and clustering pearls. Inlaid with gold and many curious curls. Of twining vines and tendrils bearing birds. Among the leaves and blooming flowers, that words. May not reveal, such loveliness in art. With fancy's spirit hands can only start. From plastic elements before the eye. And mingle there the charms of empery. Beneath two diamond doves that shining glow. Upon the summit, the bright waters flow with aromatic splendors to the skies, while glistening colors of the rainbow rise. Here ends the tablet, 260, when the hero viewed the fountain which within the garden stood. Tablet 8 Column I The king's adventure at the gate of the garden of the gods with the two maidens one of them leads him into the happy hall songs of the Sabatu and Zc. A gate half opened shows the silvery sea. Yet distant shining lambent on his way. And now he sees young Siduri, 261 whose breast. Infuses life. All nature she hath blessed. Whose lips are flames, her arms are walls of fire. Whose love yields pleasures that can never tire. She to the souls who joy on earth here miss. Grants them above a holier, purer bliss. The maiden sits within a holy shrine. Beside the gate with lustrous eyes divine. And beckons to the king, who nearer comes. And near her glows the happy palace domes. And lo! Tis she his lips have fondly kissed. Within the garden, when like fleeing mist. She disappeared with the bright spirit 7, 262. The Sabbath, who oft glide from earth to heaven. And lo, I one of the seven, Sabbatu. Emerging from the gate doth jealous view. The coming hero who hath kissed her mate. She angry springs within to close the gate. And bars it, enters then the inner halls. And Isdabar to her now loudly calls. O Sabatu! What seest thou, my maid? Of Isdabar is Sabatu afraid? Thy gate thou barrest thus before my face. Quick, open for me or I'll force the brass. The maid now frightened opens wide the door. The Tsar and Siduri now tread the floor. Of the bright palace where sweet joy doth reign. Through crystal halls neath golden roofs the twain. Next go within a lofty ceilinged hall. With shining pearled columns, golden wall. And purple silken hangings at each door. With precious gems inlaid upon the floor. Where couches grand are spread for one to rest. Beneath the softened rays that sweet invest. The senses with a thrill of happiness. Where Siduri with joy all souls doth bless. The maid sits on a couch and turns her face. Toward the king with that immortal grace. That love to gods and men will e'er bestow. Their eyes now mingling with a happy glow. The maiden sweetly says, Where wouldst thou go? Within these happy halls we joy but know. And if thou wilt, my king, my heart is thine. Our love will ever bring us bliss divine. Alas, my maid, thy love to me is dear. 
And sad am I that I must go from here. I came from Erech by advice from one. I loved more than thou canst e'er know, but gone. From me is my Hiabani, faithful seer. Across a desert waste have I come here. And he has there to dust returned to dust. Oh how the love of my friend I did trust. I would that we had never started here. I now must find the great immortal seer. The maiden turns her glowing eyes on him. Replies, My king, thou knowest joy may gleam. Take courage, weary heart, and sing a song. The hour of sorrow can never be long. The day will break, and flood thy soul with joy. And happiness thy heart will then employ. Each day must end with all its sorrow, woe. Oh, sing with me, dear heart. I love thee so. And lo! The curtains flung aside, now comes. The joyous sabato from yonder rooms. And gathering round, a song they gaily sing. Oh, how with music the bright walls now ring! If evil thou hast done, my king! Oh, pray! Oh, pray! And to the gods thy offerings bring! And pray! And pray! The sea is roaring at thy feet. The storms are coming, rain and sleet. To all the gods. Oh, pray to them I owe, pray. Chorus. To all the gods. Oh, pray to them. Oh, pray. Thy city we will bless, O Sar. With joy, with joy. And prosper thee in peace and war. With joy, with joy. And bless thee every day and night. Thy kingly robes keep pure and bright. Give thee bright dreams. O glorious king of war. Chorus. Give thee bright dreams. O glorious king of war. And if thy hand would slay thy foes. In war, in war. With thee returning victory goes. In war, in war. We grant thee victory, my king. Like marshes swept by storms, we bring our power to thee with victory in war. Page 136. Chorus. Our power to thee with victory in war. And if thou wouldst the waters pass, the sea, the sea, we'll go with thee in every place. With thee, with thee. To his halls and glorious throne. Where he unrivaled reigns alone. To he go. Upon his throne of snow. Chorus. To he go. Upon his throne of snow. And if thine anger rules thy heart. As fire, as fire. And thou against thy foes would start. With ire, with ire. Against thy foes thy heart be hard. And all their land with fire be scarred. Destroy thy foes. Destroy them in thine ire. Chorus. Destroy thy foes. Destroy them in thine ire. And lo! Young Siduri hath disappeared. And with the Zisi crown she now appeared. The corn gods in a crescent round their queen. She waves before the king her Nusku 263 green. And sings with her sweet voice a joyful lay. And all the Zisi join the chorus gay. 264 A heifer of the corn am I. Kara. Kara. 265. Yoked with the kind we gaily fly. Kara. Kara. The plowman's hand is strong and drives. The glowing soil, the meadow thrives. Before the oxen. Salam at Unaisai.266. Chorus. Before the oxen. Salam at Unaisai. The harvesters are in the corn. Kara. Kara. Our feet are flying with the morn. Kara. Kara. We bring thee wealth. It is thine own. The grain is ripe. Oh, cut it down. The yellow grain. Salam at Unaisai. Chorus. The yellow grain. Salam at Unaisai. 
The fruit of death, O oh, King, taste it not. Taste not. Taste not. With fruit of life the land is fraught. Around. Around. The fruit of life we give to thee. And happiness, O, oh, ever see. All joy is thine. Through earth and heavens bound. Chorus. All joy is thine. Through earth and heavens bound. Our corn immortal there is high. And ripe. And ripe. And ever ripens neath that sky. As gold. As gold. Our corn is bearded. 267 Thus tis known. And ripens quickly when tis grown. Be joy with thee. Our love around thee fold. Chorus. Be joy with thee. Our love around thee fold. Our king from us now goes, now goes. Away. Away. His royal robe behind him glows. Afar. Afar. Across the waves where he reigns. The waters swollen he soon gains. To our great seer. He sails to him afar. Chorus. To our great seer. He sails to him afar. And he will reach that glorious land. Away. Away. Amid our fruit trees he will stand. That day. That day. Our fruit so sweet the king will eat. Nor bitter mingle with the sweet. In our seer's land. That glows afar away. Chorus. In our seer's land. That glows afar away. The singing spirits from them fled, and he. Alone stood thinking by young Siduri. The king leaned on his bow, and eyed the maid. A happy look came in his eyes, and fled. For lo! The curtain quick aside is pushed. And Sabatu within upon them rushed. She stately glides across the shining floor. And eyes them both, then turns toward the door. But Isdabar is equal to the task. With grace now smiling, of the maid doth ask. O Sabatu! Wouldst thou tell me the way? To Kasasadra? For I go this day. If I the sea may cross, how shall I go? Or through the desert? Thou the path mayst know. The maiden startled looks upon his face. And thus she answers him with queenly grace. So soon must go. Thou canst not cross the sea. For thou wilt perish in the waves that way. Great Samus once the way of me did ask. And I forbade him, but the mighty task. He undertook, and crossed the mighty deep. Where death's dark waters lie in wait asleep. His mighty car of gold swept through the skies. With fiery chargers now he daily flies. When I approach thee, thou from me wouldst flee. But if thou must so soon thus go, the sea. Perhaps thou too canst cross, if thou wilt void. Death's waters, which relentless ever glide. But Isdabar, you are he, here hath come. The boatman of the seer, who to his home. Returns. He with an axe in yonder woods. A vessel builds to cross the raging floods. If thou desirest not to cross with him. We here will welcome thee through endless time. But if thou goest, may they see thy face. Thou seekest, welcome thee, and thy heart bless. Column 2. The king on leaving the happy halls meets you are he, the boatman of the seer Kasasadra they build a ship and embark on an unknown sea. And on their voyage pass through the waters of death. And Isdabar turn from the halls and goes. Toward a fountain in the park, whence flows. A merry stream toward the wood. He finds. An axe beside the fount, and thoughtful winds. Through groves of sandalwood and mastic trees. An algam, Amritgana. Now he sees. The sigari in Amakana, pines. With babuaku, and rewood brightly shines. Among the Azuhu. All precious woods. That man esteems are grown around, each buds. Continuous in the softened, balmy air. 
he stops beneath a musro canna where the pine trees spread toward the glowing sea. Wild mingled with the sermon, Esayuri. The king, now seated, with himself communes. Heeds not the warbling of the birds, and tunes. Of gorgeous songsters in the trees around. But sadly sighing gazes on the ground. And I a ship must build, alas. I know. Not how I shall return, if I thus go. The awful flood of death awaits me there. Wide stretching from this shore I know not where. He rests his chin upon his hand in thought. Full weary of a life that woe had brought. He says, when I remember Siduri. Whose heart with fondest love would comfort me. Within these happy halls, why should I go? To pain and anguish, death, mayhap, and woe. But will I thus desert my kingdom, throne? For one I know not. What? My fame alone. Mine honor should preserve. And royal state. Alas! This fame is but a dream of fate. A longing after that which does not cheer. The heart. Applause of men, or thoughtless sneer. Is not to me, I am alone. Alone. This immortality cannot atone. For my hard fate that wrings mine aching heart. I long for peace and rest, and I must start. And find it, leave these luring bright abodes. I seek the immortality of gods. This fame of man is not what it doth seem. It sleeps with all the past, a vanished dream. My duty calls me to my kingdom, throne. To Kasasadrago, whose aid alone. Can save my people from an awful fate. That hangs above them, born of fiends of hate. And I shall there return without my seer. I live, and he is dead. Why did I hear? His words advising me to come. Alas! I sadly all my weary days shall pass. No one shall love me as my seer, my friend. But what said Siduri? There comes an end. At last to sorrow, joy will hopeful spring. On wings of light. Oh, how my heart will sing. I bless ye all, ye holy spirits here. Your songs will linger with me, my heart cheer. Upon my way I turn with joy again. How true your joyful song. Your memory then. Will keep me hopeful through yon darkened way. How bright this land doth look beside the sea. He looks across the fields. The river glows. And winds beside to pranny trees, and flows. By Teberinth and groves of Tarpiki. And ku trees, curving round green mezcai. Through beds of flowers, that kiss its waves and spring. Luxuriant with songs the groves far ring. Now thinking of the ship, he turns his eyes. Toward the fountain springs up with surprise. Tis he. The boatman comes. You are he comes. And, oh. At last, I'll reach the glistening domes. Of Kasasadra's palaces at last. My feet shall rest upon that land be placed. And now you are he nearer makes his way. And Isdabar addressing him, doth say. You are he is thy name. From yonder sea. Thou comest from the seer across the way. Thou speakest truth. Great Tsar, what wouldst thou have? How shall I Kasasadra reach? The grave. He hath escaped, immortal lives beyond. For I to him upon my way am bound. Shall I the waters cross or take my way? Through yon wide desert, for I start this day. Across the sea we go, for I with thee. Return to him, I know the winding way. Thine axe of bronze with precious stones inlaid. With mine, we'll use beneath the pine tree's shade. And now, within the grove a ship they made. Complete and strong as wise you are he bade. They fell the pines five gar in length, and h-e-w. The timbers square, and soon construct a new. And buoyant vessel, firmly fixed the mast. And tackling, sails, and oars make taut and fast. Thus built, 
toward the sea they push its prow. Equipped complete, provisioned, launch it now. An altar next they raise and thus invoke. The gods, their evil workings to revoke. 268 O Lord of Charms, Illustrious. Who gives. Life to the dead, the merciful who lives. And grants to hostile gods of heaven return. To homage render, worship thee, and learn. Obedience. Thou who didst create mankind. In tenderness, thy love round us, O, wind. The merciful, the God with whom is life. Establish us, O Lord, in darkest strife. O never may thy truth forgotten be. May Akkad's race forever worship thee. One month and fifteen days upon the sea. Thus far the voyagers are on their way. Now black before them lies a barren shore. Burtopped with frowning cliffs, whence comes a roar. Of some dread fury of the elements. That shakes the air and sweeping wrath foments. O'er winds and seas. And see. A yawning cave. There opens vast into a void dislave. Where freem shadows ride the hueless waves. Dread Ninazu whose deathless fury craves. For hapless victims lashes with a roar. The mighty seas upon that awful shore. The fiends of darkness gathered lie in wait. With Mamatu, the goddess of fierce hate. And Jibble 269 with his spells, and Nibiru 270. The twin god of black fate, and grim Nusku 271. The keeper of red thunders, and Urbit 272. The dog of death. And fiend of Queen Balat. 273. And Nukku, and the black browed Edhutu 274. The gods of darkness here with Tsilat 2.275. And see. Dark Rimmon 276 o'er a crag alone. And Jibble with his blasting malisound. Above with his dark face maleficent. Who wields a power o'er men omnipotent. For lore. For lore. The souls who feel that blast. Which sweeps around that black forbidding coast. Fierce whirling storms and hurricanes here leap. With blasting lightnings maltalent and sweep. The furious waves that lash around that shore. As the fierce whirl of some dread maelstrom's power. Above the cavern's arch. See. Ninip 277 stands. He points within the cave with beckoning hands. You are he cries, my lord. The tablets 278 say. That we should not attempt that furious way. Those waters of black death will smite us down. Within that cavern's depths we will but drown. We cannot go but once, my friend, that road. The hero said, tis only ghosts abode. We go, then, Isdabar, its depths will sound. But we within that gloom will whirl around. Around, within that awful whirlpool black. And once within, we dare not then turn back. How many times, my friend, I dare not say. Tis written. We within shall make our way. The foaming tide now grasped them with its power. And billowed round them with continuous roar. Away. They whirl. With growing speed, till now. They fly on lightning's wings and ride the brow. Of maddened tempests o'er the dizzy deep. So swift they move, the waves in seeming sleep. Beneath them, whirling there with force unseen. But see. Up darting with a sulfurous gleam. The hag of death leaps on the trembling prow. Her eyes, of fire and hate, turns on them now. With famine gaunt, and haggard face of doom. She sits there soundless in the awful gloom. O oh gods, shrieked Isdabar in his despair. Have I the god of fate at last met here? Avaunt, thou fiend. Hence to thy pit of hell. Hence. Hence. And rid me of thy presence fell. And see. She nearer comes with deathless ire. With those fierce, moveless, glaring eyes of fire. 
her wand is raised. She strikes. O oh gods, he screams. He falls beneath that bolt that on them gleams. And she is gone within the awful gloom. Hark! Hear those screams. Accursed! Accursed thy doom! And lo! He springs upon his feet in pain. And cries. Thy curses, fiend! I hurl again. And now a blinding flash disparts the black. And heavy air, a moment light doth break. And see! The king leans fainting, gainst the mast. With glaring eyeballs, clenched hands aghast. Behold! That pallid face and scaly hands. A leper white, accursed of gods, he stands. A living death, a life of awful woe. Incurable by man, his way shall go. But oh! The seer in all enchantments wise. Will cure him on that shore, or else he dies. And see! The vessel's prow with shivering turns. Adown the roaring flood that gapes and churns. Beneath like some huge boiling cauldron black. Thus whirl they in the slimy cavern's track. And spirit ravens round them fill the air. And see! They fly! The cavern sweeps behind. Away the ship doth ride before the wind. The darkness deep from them has fled away. The fiends are gone. The vessel in the spray. With spreading sails has caught the glorious breeze. And dances in the light o'er shining seas. The blissful haven shines upon their way. The waters of the dawn sweep o'er the sea. They proudly ride tip to the glowing sand. And joyfully the king springs to the land. Column 3. Kasasadra on the shore sees the vessel coming, and returning to his palace, sends his daughter Mua to welcome Isdabar meeting of the king and sage. Beneath a kutri Kasasadra eyes. The spreading sea beneath the azure skies. An aged youth with features grave, serene. Matured with godly wisdom. Ne'er was seen. Such majesty, nor young, nor old, a seer. In purpose high. The countenance no fear. Of death has marred, but on his face sublime. The perfect soul has left its seal through time. Ah, yes. The dream was clear, the vision true. I saw him on the ship. Is it in view? A speck. Ah, yes. He comes. He comes to me. My son from Erech comes across the sea. Back to his palace goes the holy seer. And Mu'a 279 sends, who now the shore doth near. As beautiful as waters of the dawn. Comes Mu'a here, as graceful as a fawn. The king now standing on the glistening sand. Beholds the beauteous Mu'a where she stands. With hands outstretched in welcome to the king. O oh, thou sweet spirit, with thy snowy wing! O, oh, where is Kasasadra in this land? I seek the aid of his immortal hand. Great Tsar, said Mu'a, hadst thou not a seer? That thou shouldst come to seek my father here. Tis true, my daughter dear, a seer had I. Whom I have lost, a dire calamity. By his advice and love I undertake. This journey. But alas! For mine own sake. He fell by perils on this lengthened way. He was not strong, and feared that he should lay. Himself to rest amid the mountains wild. He was a warrior, with him I killed. Kumbaba, Elam's king who safely dwelt. Within a forest vast of pines, and dealt. Destruction o'er the plains. We raised his walls. My friend at last before me dying falls. Alas! Why did my seer attempt to slay? The dragons that we met upon the way. He slew his foe, and like a lion died. Ah, me! The cause, when I the gods defied. And brought upon us all this awful woe. In sorrow o'er his death, my life must flow. For this I came to find the ancient seer. Lead me to him, I pray, if he lives here. 
Then Mua leads him through the glorious land. Of matchless splendor, on the border grand. Of those wide happy fields that spread afar. O'er beaming hills and valleys, where ambient air. With sweetest zephyrs sweeps a grand estrade. Where softest odors from each flowering glade. Lull every sense a swoon that breathes not bliss. And harmony with world of blessedness. Neath trees of luring fruits she leads the way. Through paths of flowers where night hath fled away. A wilderness of varied crystal flowers. Where fragrance rests o'er clustering, shining bowers. Each gleaming cup its nectared wine distills. For spirit lips each chalice ever fills. Beyond the groves a lucent palace shone. In grandest splendor near an inner zone. In amethyst and gold divinely rose. With glory scintillant the palace glows. A dazzling halo crowns its lofty domes. And spreading from its summit softly comes. With grateful rays, and floods the balustrades. And golden statues, neath the high arcades. A holy palace built by magic hand. With wondrous architecture, portals grand. And orine turrets piled to dizzy heights. Oh, how its glory is to bar delights. Beneath majestic arcades carved, they pass. Up golden steps that shine like polished glass. Through noble corridors with sculptured walls. By lofty columns, archways to the halls. Of glories. The bright harbinger of fanes. Of greater splendor of the heavenly plains. Beneath an arch of gems the king espies. A form immortal, he who death defies. Advancing forth the sage his welcome gives. Tis Isdabar who comes to me and lives. Embracing him he leads him in a room. Where many a curious graven tablet, tome. And scrolls of quaint and old forgotten lore. Have slept within for centuries of yore. The tablets high are heaped, the alcoves full. Where truth at last has found a welcome goal. In wisdom's room, the sage his guest has led. And seats him till the banquet high is spread. Of Isdabar he learns his journeys great. How he for aid has left his throne of state. The maid now comes, him welcomes to the hall. Of banquets, where are viands liberal. And fruits, immortal bread, celestial wines. Of vintage old. And when the hero dines. They lead him to his private chamber room. That overlooks the wondrous garden's bloom. Across the plain and jasper sea divine. To heaven's mountains rising saffron. For beauteous streams of liquid silver lead. Across the plain, the shining sea they feed. The king reclines upon his couch at rest. With dreams of happiness alone is blessed. Column 4 The king is cured by the incantations of Kasasadra, and he becomes immortal. When Isdabar awakes, they lead the way. To the bright fount beside the jasper sea. The seer, with Mua and Uarhi, stands. Beside the king, who holily lifts his hands. Above an altar where the glowing rays. Of sacred flames are curling, thus he prays. Ye glorious stars that shine on high. Remember me. Oh, hear my cry. Sukunu, 280 bright star of the west. Dilgon, my patron star, oh, shine. O oh, Marbiudu, whose rays invest. Dear Dnieper 281 with thy light divine. The flames that shines, upon the waste. O oh, Papsicle, thou star of hope. Sweet God of bliss, to me, O, oh, haste. Before I faint and lifeless drop. O oh, Adar 282 star of Nanazu. Be kind. O oh, Araditartuku. Sweet U2CAJBU. 283 dear star. With thy pure face that shines afar. Oh, pardon me. Each glorious star. Zamama, 284 hear me. Oh Zamama. Caca ma you caca ma. 285. 286 remember him. Oh dear Zamama. 
CACA ma you CACA ma. As Isdabar doth end his holy prayer. He kneels, and they now bear his body where. A snowy couch doth rest beneath a shrine. That stands near by the glowing fount divine. And Kasasadra lifts his holy hands. His incantation chants, and o'er him stands. O Bel, Lord of Anunasii. O Nina, his daughter. Z. 287. This incantation aid. Remember us, remember. 288 ye tempests of high heaven, be still. Ye raging lightnings, O, oh, he calm. From this brave man his strength is gone. Before thee see him lying ill. O, oh, fill with strength his feeble frame. O oh, Ishtar, shine from thy bright throne. From him thine anger turn away. Come from thy glowing mountains, come. From paths untrod by man, O, oh, haste. And bid this man arise this day. With strength divine as heaven's dome. His form make pure and bright and chaste. The evil curse, O, oh, drive away. Go. Asaxiu Kabailu, 289 Go. O Namtar Ulim Nu, 290 O, fly. Utucc Ulim Nu, 291 From him flow. Elu Ulim Nu, 292 Hence. Away. Isiam Ulim Nu, 293 Go. Thou fiend. Fly, Gaulu Ulim Nu, 294 afar. Fly from his head. His life. I send. The fiend. Depart from Isdabar. Go from his forehead, breast, and heart. And feet. Avaunt. Thou fiend. Depart. O, oh, from the curse, thou spirit high. And spirit of the earth, come nigh. Protect him, may his spirit fly. O Spirit of the Lord of Lands, and Goddess of the Earthly Lands, protect him. Raise with strength his hands. O, make him as the holy gods. His body, limbs, like thine abodes. And like the heavens may he shine. And like the earth with rays divine. Quick! With the Kaisai Bita 295 to bring. High heavens charm bind round his brow. The Sisbu 296 place around his hands. And let the Sabusat 297 bright cling. The Musucat 298 lay round him now. And wrap his feet with rad bat bands, 299. And open now his Zik, man 300. The Sisbu cover, and his hands. The Basat 301 place around his form. From baldness and disease, this man. Cleanse, make him whole, head, feet, and hands. O purity, breathe thy sweet charm. Restore his health and make his skin. Shine beautifully, beard and hair. Restore. Make strong with might his loins. And may his body glorious shine. As the bright gods. Ye winds him bear. Immortal flesh to his soul joins. Thou spirit of this man. Arise. Come forth with joy. Come to the skies. And lo! His leprosy has fled away. He stands immortal, purged. Released from clay. Column V, Istabar falls in love with Mu'a, and offers her his hand. O Mu'a! Thou bright waters of the dawn! O, oh, where art thou? One cries as he doth run. Through the bright garden. See. Tis Isdabar. Immortal. Glorious. Our king of war. And now in love is seeking Mu'a here. He scarcely treads the ground as he comes near. A glow of youth immortal on his cheek. A form that sorrow, death, will never seek. Within these happy fields, his eyes with light. That love alone may give, show his delight. A dazzling pillared vista round him shines. Where golden columns bear the bowering shrines. With gemmed domes that clustering round him rise. 
mid fruit trees, flashing splendors to the skies. He goes through silver grots along a zone. And now he passes yonder blazing throne. O'er diamond pavements. Passes shining seats. Whereon the high and holy conclave meets. To rule the empires vast that spread away. To utmost bounds in all their vast array. Around the whole expanse grand cest spread. O'er paths sidereal unending lead. As circling wheels within a wheel they shine. Enveloping the fields with light divine. A noontide glorious of shining stars. Where humming music rings from myriad cars. Where pinioned multitudes their harps may tune. And in their holy sanctity commune. And see. Here Mua comes. She stops and waits. Within a jest and bower beside its gates. Around, above her spreads a flowering vine. And o'er a ruby fountain almondine. And on a graven garnet table grand. Carved cups of solid pearl and tilpa 302 stand. A zada 303 reservoir stands near, which rounds. The fount wherein the fragrant nectar bounds. The ground is strewn with peri 304 gems and pearls. Wherefrom the light now softly backward hurls. Its rays o'er couches of peruti 305 stone. Soft cushioned, circling in the inner zone. Beside the shining Kamisudi way. 306. Where nectar fountains in their splendor play. The path leads far along life's beauteous stream. That ever through this world of joy doth gleam. And see. The hero comes. And now doth near. The maiden wherewith love she waits him here. She flings a flowering garland, weaves it round. His form as he comes by. He turns around. And she enwraps his breast and arms, and says. Dear Isdabar. And thus my lover strays. I'll bind thee with this fragrant chain to keep. Thee ever by my side. Thy pleasant sleep. Hath kept my lover from my side too long. O oh, thou sweet spirit, like a warbling song. Thy words are to my heart. I sought for thee. And thy bright face and presence did not see. I come to tell thee that I must return. When from thy father all the past shall learn. And wilt thou go from me to earth again? No. No. Dear Isdabar, I thee enchain. Tis true, my love, I must return to men. My duty calls me to my throne again. Dear Isdabar. My friend. My love. My heart. I cannot let thee from my soul depart. Thou shinest in my breast as some bright star. And shall I let thee from me go afar? But Mua, we immortal are, and we. There might return, and thou on earth shalt see. The glories of my kingdom, be my queen. Upon a couch I'll seat thee, there to reign. With me, my beauteous queen, beside me sit. And kings will come to us and kiss thy feet. With all my wealth I'll clothe thee, ever love. Thee, fairest of these glorious souls that move. Within this happy world. My people there. Shall love us ever drive away all care. When Mua heard him offer thus his hand. She then unbinds him, thoughtful now doth stand. Column 6. Mua's answer. Sweet Mua lifts her eyes toward the heights. That glow afar beneath the softened lights. That rest upon the mountains crystalline. And see. They change their hues in carnadine. To gold, and emerald, and opaline. Swift changing to a softened festiacine. Before the eye. And thus they change their hues. To please the sight of every soul that views. Them in that land, but she heeds not the skies. Or glorious splendor of her home. Her eaves. Have that far look of spirits viewing men. On earth, from the invisible main. That erstwhile rests upon the mortal eye. A longing for that home beyond the sky. A yearning for that bliss that love imparts. 
where pain and sorrow reach no mortal hearts. A light now breaks across her beauteous face. She, turning, says to him with heavenly grace. Dear Isdabar, thou knowest how I love. Thee, how my heart my love doth daily prove. And, oh, I cannot let thee go alone. I know not what awaits each soul there gone. Our spirits often leave this glorious land. Invisible return on earth, and stand. Amidst its flowerets, neath its glorious skies. Thou knowest every spirit here oft flies. From earth, but none its secrets to us tell. Lest some dark sorrow might here work its spell. And, oh, I could not see dark suffering, woe. There spread, with power none to stop its flow. I saw thee coming to us struck with fire. Oh, how to aid thee did my heart desire. Our tablets tell us how dread sorrow spreads. Upon that world and mars its glowing meads. But, oh, so happy am I, here to know. That they with us here end all sorrow, woe. O oh, precious Isdabar! Its sights would strike. Me there with sadness, and my heart would break. And yet I learn that it is glorious, sweet. To there enjoy its happiness so fleet. It speeds to sorrowing hearts to turn their tears. To joy. How sweet to them when it appears. And sends a gleam of heaven through their lives. No. No. Dear heart. I cannot go. It grieves. Thee. Come, my dear one. Quick to us return. We here again will pair our love, and learn. How sweet it is to meet with joy again. How happy will sweet love come to us then. She rests her head upon his breast, and lifts. Her face for love's sweet kiss, and from them drifts. A halo o'er the shining jestin trees. And spreads around them heaven's holy rays. He kisses her sweet lips, and brow, and eyes. Then turns his gaze toward the glowing skies. I bless thee, for thy sweetest spirit here. I bless this glorious land, that brings me near. To one that wafts sweet heaven in my heart. From thy dear plains how can my soul depart? O oh, Mua, Mua! How my heart now sings! Thy love is sweeter than all earthly things. I would I were not crowned a king, away. From this bright land here would I ever stay. As thou hast said, I soon will here return. The earth cannot withhold me from this born. And soon my time allotted there will end. And hitherward how happy I will wend. And when thou goest, how my love shall there. Guard thee, and keep thy heart with Mua here. Another kiss. Her form doth disappear. Within the garden, gliding through the air. He seats himself upon a couch and rests. His head upon his hand, and thought invests. Him round. His memory returns again. To Eureka's throne, and all the haunts of men. He rises, turns his footsteps to the halls. And thoughtful disappears within its walls.